पाकिस्तान का जो पॉलिटिकल कल्चर है ना यू आर आइर इन द प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स हाउस एंड द डे यू लीव द प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स हाउस वेरी ऑफन यू आर इन अडियाला जेल ही हैज यूज इस्लाम एज अ पोलिटिकल टूल आई वु रादर हैव अ डम गाय लाइक इमरान दैन एन इंटेलिजेंट गाय और अ कनिंग गाय लाइक जयाउल हक I don't see, uh, you know, why I want somebody who makes Pakistan a strong, prosperous ne- country. You know, you know, we are the same people. You know, all that nonsense which happens. एक कोई है, एक कोई है, ये सारा, हाँ, हाँ, this. अच्छा, and then this, this familiar. तो ये politicians ने हमको divide किया. बाकी तो हम बड़े अच्छे थे. The Pakistanis uh, are in a very bad spot right now. Partly because now the Chinese are no longer. even observing diplomatic niceties with them oh, pakistan's case you know they have this belief that they are too important to fail kabhi us aa jayega kabhi pakistan china aa jayega kabhi saudi aa jayenge apni responsibility nahi leni they can't reform their own system aap log naksha vaksha dekhte ho kabhi do you study a map i want somebody who divides the pakistanis like imran has done i want somebody who destroys their economy like imran has done i want somebody who destroys their foreign policy like imran has done Namaste Jai Hind welcome to another edition of ANI podcast with Smita Prakash Today we shall discuss Pakistan I know many of you will say that why Pakistan we should be focusing on China China is our main adversary and not Pakistan But let me tell you Pakistan is a potent military threat to India even when it's down and out So today my guests are super special because they know all there is to know about Pakistan I have with me Tilak Deveshar and Sushant Sareen, two domain specialists who have appeared on the podcast before. Tilak Deveshar is an author of three books on Pakistan and is currently a member of the Indian National Security Advisory Board. He worked in the research and analysis wing before superannuating. Tilak Deveshar and Sushant Sareen have appeared on several panels discussing terrorism and Pakistan. Sushant is with the Observer Research Foundation. He's written extensively on Pakistan and appeared on TV debates. Sushant is an avid user of social media and his take on India's strategic challenges is sharp and insightful. But before I begin my conversation with my two guests, here is a short primer on what happened in Pakistan in the past week. I know many of you would be aware of the events that are unfolding out there, but for those who don't know, here is a short primer. Pakistan's former prime minister and legendary cricketer Imran Khan has been arrested. He's expressed apprehension that he will be assassinated. He's also warned the people of Pakistan that the country is hurtling towards economic and political chaos. And in the week before that, the foreign minister of Pakistan Bilawal Bhutto Zardari was in India. to participate in a conference of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization the first Pakistani foreign minister to visit India since 2011 as expected the SCO faded into the background and all media attention was on bilateral ties India and Pakistan and needless to say the visit did not go well though Bhutto has claimed it to be a success there was some sharp take down by the Indian foreign minister So now let's head to the conversation with Sushant Sareen and Tilak Deveshar. Thank you Sushant, thank you Tilak. I hope I have your permission to address you by your first names and uh, it's good to have you both back and in you know in our production jargon is known as RPGs. You are repeat performance guest, not the other RPG. But mujhe pehle I want to know one thing first. Yes Sushant. I am sitting with a top notch journalist and I'm sitting with a top notch spy. Huh. And you have pick this day for doing a podcast on pakistan did you know in advance that imran is going to be arrested the two of you i knew ha ye conspiracy thi aapko bilkul bilkul mujhe aur mujhe tip off kiya tha ye aapko tip off kiya isliye aapne aaj ke isliye sushant is the bakra who didn't know he's the only person but under protest i'm wearing a black shirt because i protest the arrest of imran khan हाँ ये इन दिस मैन इज ऑलवेज बीन सेइंग इन केस यू डोंट फॉलो हिज सोशल मीडिया हैंडल सुशांत इज लाइक ऑलवेज नो द बेस्ट थिंग टू हैव टू इंडिया इज इमरान खान बिकमिंग प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ पाकिस्तान नॉट हिम सिटिंग इन अ व्हील चेयर तो मैं तो इनको कब से बोल रहा हूँ ये मानते नहीं है अच्छा ही डज नॉट इवन एक्सेप्ट वो रा का एजेंट है रा का एजेंट है रा का हाँ नो प्लीज तिलक देवेश्वर डजेंट लाइक टू बी कॉल्ड रा रा और एक्स रा ही इज नाउ इंटेलेक्ट चावल एज दे कॉल्ड इन पाकिस्तान 
तीन किताबें लिख दी अब इससे अफगानिस्तान योर बुक नॉट हाँ तो तीन तो पाकिस्तान पे ना गलती तो नहीं की मैंने तीन के तो पाकिस्तान अच्छा साढ़े तीन अफगानिस्तान भी तो पाकिस्तानियों ने अपना फिफ्थ प्रोविंस बनाया हुआ था अच्छा ओके बैकयार्ड नहीं बट फिफ्थ प्रोविंस बना province. दिया ओके लेट्स गेट टू द मीट ऑफ द स्टोरी दैट द पॉडकास्ट वाज सपोज्ड टू बी अबाउट बिलावल एंड नाउ इट्स टर्नड आउट टू बी अबाउट इमरान खान डिड यू एक्सपेक्टेड बोथ ऑफ यू दैट इमरान खान वुड बी अरेस्टेड वॉट डू थिंक मिस्टर देशर ही वॉज वेटिंग टू बी अरेस्टेड आई मीन यू नो दिस वॉज ऑन द कार्ड आई थिंक ही picked up in 120 cases he's been escaping by the skin of his teeth every time he gets bail in 6 bail in 8 bail in you know he thought the judiciary has been extremely kind and dealing with him in kidla the judiciary in pakistan has been extremely kind in treating uh, imran khan with kids gloves is yeah, that what you're ab- saying absolutely yeah. absolutely okay when the police had a warrant and they went to zaman park to pick him up his crowd his supporters came all over and prevented the police from entering uh, his house today so this was bound to happen any time you know the, the toss up was whether he gets disqualified first or whether he gets arrested first or both are going to happen today that's why the rangers there were so many of them and the rangers were a stronger force than the police so they made sure that they're not going to get side tracked by any police or any crowds therefore they just whisked him away in that van and people say that he was being pushed and all that i think the rangers idea was to get this guy out of this place and take him to a location where his supporters do, do not connect but uh, sushant so i mean everybody knows do you think that it was wrong on the part of imran supporters to prevent it because look we all know what happened to zardari in prison we know what happened to nawaz sharif in prison hum piche to jaate hi nahi hai what happened with bhutto and with the others right i mean let's let's not talk go there let's talk about the brutality which zardari has faced his, <coughs> i think his tongue was cut or mm, something yes. like that right what happened with uh, nawaz ben-Nazir, sharif ben-Nazir. with and with benazir with so many of them i mean uh, i can she was assassinated ziaul haq was killed zulfikar ali bhutto Uh, was assassinated uh, before that liaquat was shot dead liaquat khan so you know we can go into an entire list of uh, what happens with former prime ministers and presidents dekho foreign uh, former prime ministers ka ye hota hai pakistan ka jo political culture hai na that is that uh, you are either in the prime minister's house and the day you leave the prime minister's house very often you are in adiala jail hmm. so they shuffle between those two places it sometimes there is an interregnum like in imran's case that you know it's taken a few months almost a year that he is going to jail but shahid khakan abasi went to jail before that yusuf raza gilani went gilani, to jail yes. nawaz sharif has gone to jail benazir bhutto just escaped it she went into exile uh, zulfikar ali bhutto went to jail so jail and adiala uh, jail and prime minister's prime house, house is par for the course for these guys imran has gone to adiala not uh, yet uh, not yet uh, there will be a time for that also that's why he's been taken to raul pindi i don't know where he's yeah. been taken right where, no, that right now he won't be taken to jail they have to produce him before the courts uh, then they'll have to take his remand but the fact that and he's been taken to pindi and nowhere else yeah. i mean pindi is significant isn't it but pindi doesn't mean does not mean jhq well, what else does it mean I mean, I mean no, no, Pindi is completely J H G H Q. No, no, but Pindi also means that he. Uh, is for those who don't know uh, about, uh, you know, uh, there are some, uh, uh, you know, overseas Indians who also watch the podcast who don't understand these uh, complexity sometimes, and the Indians who are watching it get very irritated. कि आप क्यों interrupt कर रहे हो अपने guest को क्यों flow बंद कर रहे हो? But to just to explain, what does Rawal Pindi mean? Pindi is something that we call. What does Rawal Pindi mean? What does jail in rawal pindi and what is ghq the the all encompassing influence so so rawal pindi is basically where the uh, general headquarters of the pakistan army is it's the it's the hub of the pakistan army uh, apara is in islamabad which is the headquarters of the isi islam when people talk as islamabad and pindi what they are talking about is the where the civilians are based which is uh, islamabad and pindi is when they when they want to use shorthand or euphemisms for the pakistan army they talk about pindi but in this particular case he has been taken to pindi uh, uh, and i don't know what is exactly is the case under which he has been booked but i think he has been taken to pindi because it must have something to do with the punjab uh, government 
Punjab police because if you are going to show him arrested in Pindi and you are going to produce him before a court in Pindi then the jurisdiction is of one of the Lahore High Court and then of the local uh, Punjab uh, administration unlike if you pick him up in Islamabad and present him in court in Islamabad then it becomes the uh, Islamabad High Court. High Court and the uh, the uh, the the administration of Islamabad which is like the national capital territory so the case is al qadir trust hmm. which is if you remember the malik yeah, yeah. malik riaz that big uh, dubious tycoon yeah yeah, yeah. he that was had a case in the uk and they recovered 190 million pounds for him and handed it over to the pakistan government who they british okay. authorities hmm. in a in a serious crimes case or something hmm. like that imran khan returned that money to malik riaz after having got it from the uk in lieu of that malik riaz allotted him a huge plot of land in which he built a university. Mass huge plot of land and there are only 34 students in that university. Obviously, it was a kickback. And then his wife, Bushra Baby, you know, she sort of bargained to get a ring. Hmm. It was a famous diamond ring she got from Malik Riyaz. You know, so this was a... Insisting on five carats, not three carats. Yeah. Hmm. This was a quid pro quo. So in that case, he didn't get bail. And he was charged by this by the National Accountability Bureau. And I think it is this particular case Full details are not available, but it is this case that he is being picked up on. But so somewhat, initially, I tried to keep uh, a track of the cases. You can't. But then there are so many. 121 I don't even know which case he's booked in anymore huh. and what the status and of a particular case is. And when he came, that was what he came, right? Mr. Clean. Yeah. Yeah. He said he wanted to clean up the system, that there was so much corruption. And he was the quintessential, like what we call in India, the Aam Admi. He was the common man, you know, who didn't come from some political family like the Bhuttos and like Sharif. Jo Sharif, Kaur, of course, they say that he's not actually a political family. He's made himself into a political family. But, you know, he, he didn't come with all that baggage. He came as a cricket icon. And then he's become part of the system, the very same system which he was fighting against, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Also, you see, even, even before that, even though he presented himself as Mr. Clean, look at his party. PTI has got funding from prohibited sources. That's another case that is going on. Sources, and he has signed checks. He's fully aware of the fact that this money was not legitimate, legitimate money which a political party should have got. Hmm. So, you know, even before he came into power, his uh, party is tainted. But how do you then explain his popularity with the people? You know, he's he's by far the most popular politician in Pakistan today. Somehow, he's it's like Teflon. Nothing sticks as far as, uh, you know, even if by law he's broken the law, people don't believe that. Yeah, yeah. You can see the outpouring. Yeah. So, yeah, I think there are a couple of reasons for uh, his popularity. One is he has a very strong support among the middle class and the lower middle class. Lawyers, doctors, Angrezi professionals. Hmm. He speaks good clipped English. Angrezi to Bilawal bhi bol leta hai. Haan, but he's With a Sindhi guy's... accent. Haan. With a Sindhi and yeah. Oxford and... Yeah. No, no, but, so, but one of the reasons is that is... he speaks good English. So, uh, because these people are not part of the traditional system. You know, they don't vote a Biradari system, the traditional political party. These bole to? These middle PTI. class, lower class okay. professionals. Okay. So, they have veered towards the PTI. Then the youth. You see, the youth is about 44%. You know? of the uh, population between the age of 18 to 35. Voting population. Voting population. Okay. They have moved in a very big way to Imran Khan. He has a massive social media sense and presence. No other party even gets to the social media organization which Imran Khan has built up. And then, you know, his own persona. When he speaks, he can be speaking a total lie. People tend to believe it. And they feel it's a right. Even if he breaks... Who misquotes a religious saying, people say, nee, nee, hai. the way he appears in court, masses of supporters, you know, he doesn't come if the hearing is at 11 o'clock, as if he's a movie star and the judges are waiting for him. But that, uh, bolna to politicians aam karte hai. Usme but not in the manner he does. Even when he's found out, he'll just take a U turn or, you know, he even when he's caught, look at the sex tapes, look at the kind of money, um, uh, favours that he's given to his friends, his wife's corruption, all these have been documented, proved and shown to the people. It makes no difference. No, but What's see, your take? Why is he uh, so popular, Sushant? Look, I think one, uh, I, I think you need a, a sociologist to figure this out on how cults are formed. 
hmm. because what he has hmm. is not political support what he has is a cult hmm. right uh, because for all the reasons that mr deveshwar is saying that uh, you know the fact that he's been found out the fact that he has he has done complete 180 degree turns from what he was in opposition what so for example uh, just uh, yesterday some people started uh, you know uh, giving out how this fellow has been uh, had had been saying that look if you are taking pot shots at the army you are damaging the country and stuff like that you know you are destroying the morale if you are targeting the army chief you are destroying the morale of the forces and you know stuff like that he said this now that he's in opposition he is doing exactly what he was raving and ranting against mm. and his supporters lap it up they lapped it up then they lap it up now right now this is a cult this is something that no matter what you say no matter what you do no matter how many u turns you make we love you i think this is a psychological disorder it, 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 there's nothing rational mm. about it right yeah uh, now in terms of his competence he's proved himself to be utterly incompetent as an administrator hmm. uh, he's proved himself to be corrupt uh, he has proved himself to uh, be a megalomania right uh, he has he has cultivated favorites to whom he has bestowed all sorts of favors so he has done everything uh, which the others have done in some cases at a bigger scale and yet because he has that cult everybody seems to swear by him but the important thing is uh, where is that cult coming from and my own sense is that what is different between imran and other leaders in pakistan is the support base that he is drawing now in his case the support base is actually the upper middle class uh, and the upper classes in punjab these are the most well connected people uh you know just uh, a couple of days back apparently a serving brigadier's wife was arrested because of you know she was uh, uh, an imran khan supporter this is a serving army officer's wife who was picked up whereas he is he is say he's taking on the army he's taking on the establishment exactly. the side but the wives are supporting the him the families he has huge support in the families okay serving and retired hmm. support of the judiciary the reason was one of the tapes that are going to come out or has come out is the wife of the chief justice yeah talking to imran khan and saying nahi nahi hum karwa denge this that and the other so that is the level of support that he has so now you know this is what i can't understand because like uh, like you says that you said that it's the lower class the lower middle class the middle class and the youth you are saying it's not just them it's the upper middle class and the middle class so basically everybody no so no. that means these are the people who are being ignored by the traditional you see the traditional pakistan parties are feudal parties look at the ppp okay zamindars zamindars you know they have right. huge look at in punjab you know yeah. the traditional parties the biradari the jat you know yeah. that kind of a thing okay the urban classes or the people who feel neglected who can't fit into this kind of a traditional political mold he is tapped into them through his own persona through massive social media look at this social media acumen you know he has uh, this uh, today he had pre recorded his arrest and what the people should do he's incited people to come out and protest massively but he's also said i saw that uh, so he says that uh, he calls the establishment he says chor hain dakait hain duffers hain Hmm. and i'd rather uh, die than live in a pakistan uh, which is ruled by them lekin main kahin jaunga nahi this is another thing that he keeps re- repeating many times over that he is going to live or die in pakistan whatever it is yeah uh, alluding Smita, to the is, uh, alluding to the others who have left and yeah. gone no no that is one part of it but there hmm. is another part to it i think a lot of his bluster and his bravado uh, comes from the fact that he actually did not think that he would be picked up i think yesterday for the first time he must have got a hint because he although he'd crossed that red line earlier as well hmm. uh, i think the tweets which he did yesterday where he was directly named the uh, one of the, the top general, is yeah. uh, general uh, isi Nasir, guys uh, nasir right? nasir yeah. uh, he named him and he implicated him you know accused him of you know planning to murder him and stuff like that and then the army the ispr, ISPR came ISPR out with a statement strong very statement. strong statement yeah. and then of course you know the others who are sucking up to the is uh, the the army 
शबाज शरीफ एंड दी अदर्स दे काइंड ऑफ पाइल्ड ऑन एंड यू नो कि जी हम आपके साथ हैं काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग आई थिंक दैट काइंड ऑफ क्रॉस द रेड लाइन सो मे बी ही वॉज अ लिटिल टेंटेटिव टूडे बट अदरवाइज ही हैज फेल्ड दैट ही इज अनटचेबल द आर्मी कॉन्ट टच हिम राइट एंड आई थिंक I remember 2007 you know this is just on the day that uh, Musharraf had done his second coup or mm. when he sacked the judges in uh, this is in November I was there in Lahore that night and on that particular night I was called for a dinner I I won't name names whose house it was but one of Imran Khan's closest associates and a family member of his was also out there and Imran had been picked up and Uh, he had escaped actually uh, he had escaped he was in hiding and uh, these guys were saying they were all discussing they knew i'm an indian of course but they were all discussing uh, how Im- how to orchestrate imran khan's surrender so i said but why does he want to surrender so they were shocked that no no he has to surrender i said why you know he should remain in hiding and make a monkey of the regime uh but he was desperate to surrender and then when he surrendered he was first uh, manhandled by the jamaat e islami goons then he was handed over to the cops he went to jail within 4 days he was screaming and shouting and you know crying and he wanted out because he couldn't handle jail so this bluff and bluster which is coming from him is just that once they start administering him the treatment I think uh, Nawaz Sharif's daughter was probably far braver, you know, despite being a woman in a country like Pakistan, being mistreated, you know, they putting cameras on her, giving her no privacy, through, yeah. yeah, all of that. She went through it, and you know, she is very feisty. I'm not sure if this guy can handle this. Plus, he has other problems. If he doesn't get his fixes in the evening, yeah, he's going to be climbing the wall. <laughs> Okay this is another thing that they say about Imran Khan that mm. you know there are so many stories about Imran Khan is he really a drug addict This yeah. Rana Sanawala said he said we can look after him very well in jail give him all the comforts but we can't give him the one thing that he wants So he's going to have withdrawal symptoms in jail Absolutely Yeah and he won't have hair long enough If he won't have hair dye to dye And he won't get kali dal And he won't get kali, kali dal he won't get kali yeah, dal okay yeah, that, that is another story yeah, in itself another, yeah, yeah. okay so i'm not going into the details it's this a is a bizarre one family <laughs> channel so i'm not going into the details of what imran khan does with kali dal i suggest you please google and see what happens and what reham khan his ex wife had to say about uh, his fascination for kali dal um, so let's get on uh, as i said about uh, imran i've been to his house uh, to interview him once and uh, i was kind of you know i i to banigala to banigala yes okay. I've been there, and uh, you know the the people around him are all these youngsters, and they don't they don't sound like Pakistanis. They sound like from some other planet. कोई अमेरिका से था, कोई यूके से था. I mean, this was or uh, more than a decade ago when he was just about you know getting into politics. But he was he was it was quite clear that there was an agenda with all those kids who were there around, very attractive young people around him. this cult figure phenomenon is extremely important because what happens is that people have got completely blinded by his personality they they don't believe anything negative that comes out of him i mean nawaz sharif ke bare mein to yun karke believe kar lete hain or even about zardari mr 10% all these things stuck but nothing seems to stick on imran khan a strong social media presence you know in today's world the youth listen to social media they listen to his tweets they listen to his video podcast and he has created this machinery of people who saturation i mean you are in the media you know the importance of social media the ppp and pt and the pmln are no match for this and a lot of these people are dual nationals you know uh, people who surround him uh, they are dual national they koi american hai pakistani hai mm. koi brit hai koi pakistani hai they really don't have the stakes in pakistan so that is one and the fact that because of his popularity because of his cult he has started believing that he is above the law he has started believing that whatever he says is the gospel truth the fellow who was lynched for blasphemy two days ago in mardan yeah he was a pti molana who mm. said that i uh, i the am the candidate yeah. he was endorsing yeah. was no he i believe he said that w- what i feel for uh, imran is what i feel for the prophet yeah. that was enough for him to be lynched can you imagine 
Yeah. Can you imagine? I mean, he was a Maulana. He should have known what he was saying. He didn't think he was saying anything wrong. On the spot, he was trampled over, beaten and killed. Yeah. And he has tapped into this religious thing also very well. You know, every now and then he comes up with the Riyasat in Medina. He tries to portray himself. Hmm. You know, one day, in, I remember one speech and I was shocked that the religious parties didn't pick it up. He said that... Uh, I think the prophet mentioned that he is very popular even amongst the families and people, you know, the families worship him a lot. And he said, look at me, all the army families are uh, my supporters. And he was making that kind of a comparison and nobody picked up on this and said, what? Because of his popularity. Because no, of he's his always figure. done it. Yeah. Hmm. In every speech of his, uh, whenever he starts talking about Islam, he always tries to draw some analogy, albeit oblique, uh, with the prophet. Uh, and then, of course, he has used uh, Islam as a political tool. And you remember when he was coming for that long march uh, in in March? How yeah, containers? Ke ah, to, wo, uska, one of his sidekicks was telling him, "Now, sir, it is time to put some Islamic touch. Ah, give it a Islamic give, touch. Give it an Islamic touch." So then he started talking about Islam and the you know, former speaker. Uh, huh. I won't hold that against him because I've seen that happen even in in India. Wo aai jata hai when you feel but that then the crowd the mic is on the chap kal leaves across and says oh, Islamic touch de do. <laughs> he says ah ha then he starts off oh, right. come on yeah but then uh, let's bring this to the Indian context uh, you have written so often and you've said this in several TV uh, appearances Sushan that he's the best thing to happen to India why do you see this do you really want Imran as a prime minister again who's like totally unhinged yeah, but look, who does he damage? He doesn't damage us. Hmm. He damages Pakistan. Pakistan is not a friendly country. It's a hostile country. Uh, it's it's always been inimical to India's interests. Uh, and if they if they elect a leader and swear by a leader who destroys them, what better for me? Uh, so uh, when you look at his economic policies, when you look at his uh, uh, his foreign policy, how he alienated every single one of Pakistan's friends, whether it was the Saudis, whether it was the Americans, whether it was the Chinese, he alienated everybody, right? Uh, what can be better than that for me? And I think Mr. Modi was smart uh, because uh, although they they had made the outreach much earlier to the Gulf, but I think they, they were smart that they doubled down on it. And look at the uh, relations that India has with many of the Gulf countries where Pakistan had a run of the uh, place. The OIC and the other. No, not, not, not the OIC. But I'm, no. uh, because OIC has, you know, shithole countries like Turkey and others mm. who are uh, rabidly anti-India. And mm. pardon my language on this, but I, I feel very strongly about my Turkey. My producer loves it. Huh? No, I, <laughs> I feel very strongly about Turkey because the Turks have been... Sponsoring a lot of trouble in Kashmir. Yeah, they have been uh, they have been instigating trouble in Kashmir. They have been carrying out a lot of that slick propaganda campaign comes from Turkey. So they have they have never been nice to us, and I see no reason why I should be nice to them. Uh, but Even the Turks, in the best of relations that we've had with Turkey, you know, uh, there was this uh, one uh, visit of the foreign secretary when I was there. Uh, I think it was Kamal Sibal, if I'm not mistaken. We were covering it in Ista Istanbul. And uh, they were like, you know, dost. Uh, uh, Hindustan, dost. Bharat, dost. But Pakistan, bhai. Hmm. You know, that that distinction they make that these are our brothers, blood brothers. No, no, but India can be a friend. So for a friend you can cut off at any point of time. Lekin mm. bhai, the blood brothers, you can't. Yes, you well, can. Well, the blood think, brothers uh, blood actually... Blood brothers are actually uh, probably worse. Uh, they are the ones who chop Look at right Mughal now. history. Uh. Look at Mughal history. Uh, okay. Okay. Mughals were basically Turks in some ways. Uh, okay. So, so bhai ke is, gala yeah, hai, yeah. that is not a problem. Succession ke no, liye but, but, but on a most, you know, uh, most seriously, I, I feel very strongly about Turkey. So it's not OIC. What I'm talking about is the Arab states. Okay. The UAE, uh, you, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, yeah. Oman, you look at Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Pakistan had a run of the place. Now, True. Imran alienated all of them. Mm. The guys are... He's really dumb in some things. From all of that perspective, I don't see, uh, you know, why I want somebody who makes Pakistan a strong, prosperous country. 
I want somebody who divides the Pakistanis like Imran has done. I want somebody who destroys their economy like Imran has done. I want somebody who destroys their foreign policy like Imran has done. I want somebody who destroys, uh, you know, the primacy of the army, the only institution that ca- had kept the country together. I want somebody like Imran who has done that. He has destroyed the army. I want somebody who destroys their security by sucking up to the Taliban and saying that they have broken the shackles of slavery. He's my dream. Mm-hmm. If I was in the job uh, Tilak Deveshwar handled, I would have wanted somebody like him to become Prime Minister. I would have sponsored somebody like him to be Prime Minister of Pakistan. So, why? so he's an answer to so your dreams. Did, no, oh first let's answer, f- before you get on to your point, I want to know this, that why didn't RAW sponsor Imran Khan yeah. to be Prime Minister of Pakistan? I mean, you're not in RAW. RAW doesn't do these no, things. No, the They're ISI was, people. But listen, <laughs> the ISI was already doing a good job. <laughs> so why should RAW? So this was a joint venture of sorts, right? So, you know, I agree with what he says. Please ignore. Uh, he, he just like kind of just brushes off. He will not say what Raal. That's Raul. his training. <laughs> so, I, I agree with what Sushant is saying about That Imran ISI Khan. did a better job than Raw could have done. But why should we? When they're already, you know, as Napoleon said, if a person is, uh, yeah. you know... Uh, committing suicide committing by suicide, Why should I stop them? Okay. But I agree with Sushant about all the uh, lacunas, all the weaknesses of Imran Khan and what he's doing to Pakistan is excellent. Except, I would rather have an intelligent enemy rather than a loose cannon like Imran Khan on the other side. Because you don't know, this guy's unpredictable. You don't know how he's going to act. So, a smarter enemy is better than a foolish enemy. That is the only caveat I have. Otherwise, I agree with him 110%. What he's done to Pakistan, since 47, no other Prime Minister has done. And especially, the way he has damaged the Pakistan army. So much so, the current army chief. To damage the Pakistan army is good na, for us. It's good for us. So uh-huh. I'm saying all these things are on the positive. Yet, my worry is that as a foolish man, you don't know what he will do as far as purely as India is concerned. He's, you know, uh, uh, sort of ruined his relationship with China, Saudi Arabia, UAE. I agree to all that. To but damaged, when it comes to India, uh-huh. you know, he may d- resort to something. You know, which I would what, rather have an intelligent enemy. What no, more but, can uh, so, they resort to? So, no, they so, do cross-border. Uh, they do everything. I mean, when Kargil happened, you had an intelligent person like Nawaz Sharif sitting out there, no? But the entire planning of Kargil was done by Musharraf. This was the third time Kargil was being um, planned. First it was done in a Zia. He rejected it. Benazir rejected it. But this time Musharraf was in control. And the coterie around him, those three other people, the infamous four, they thought they can get it done. They didn't see through the whole process. And I think Nawaz Sharif, and I've written about, extensively about this right. in my book. I've read it, yes. Yeah. So, Nawaz Sharif was brought in at times and I think Nawaz Sharif, I mean, this was the best uh, sort of analysis was, he probably didn't realize the full implications of it, but he thought that if he reads Srinagar, I'll take the credit for it. You know, it'll be so undermined. It's a big mess. I don't believe this. Hmm. I just believe when he goes to GHQ and he says, when are you going to give us uh, Kashmir? Hmm. And then he goes uh, to Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, which the Pakistanis call Azad Kashmir. He goes there and he says, when are you going to deliver hmm. Kashmir? Two times he says to chief ko bolta and the chief will sit in hand. So, you know, this thing, I don't so believe So then what that you were saying, saying is that when the bus yatra took place, when Mr. Vajpayee yes. went there, he was already on board. That's he was level of, he, That is the level of deception. I don't think so Nawaz Sharif is capable of. Oh, no. Okay, so I, I'll join an issue with him. On so this. I'll, let's agree to differ on this. Yeah. But I'll join. I want to know whose I'll side I will take on, on both these things. See, one, when you talk about an intelligent enemy, huh. I would rather have a dumb guy like Imran than an intelligent guy or a cunning guy like Ziaul Haq. Hmm. Agree. A lot of our problems which we have today are done by somebody like a Ziaul Haq who was very sweet. Very sweet. He was sweetness personified. You know, he was sweetness to a fault. And this man would actually come out... He was the president, chief martial law administrator. He was the army chief. He would come out of the house to receive somebody and see somebody off. He was, he would lay himself out for people and everybody was floored. And the moment you turned your back, he would knife you. Right? Huh. That's what he did to us every time. But why talk about us? 
this is what he did to Bhutto. No, no, he Bhutto might have done. Misread him totally all this no, while. No, but so, and then, no. so I but agree that with you. all prime ministers have misread their army chiefs. So, uh, but our problem as a system, the problem in the Indian system is that we get taken in by this these sweet nothings. Okay, so one, I would rather have an Imran Khan who abuses us left, right, and center. So at least that these guys are on their toes, rather than somebody you know who's all sweetness personified and he fools you and you give in because that is your basically your character. Yeah, but the danger there is that you think Imran Khan is a fool and therefore you don't take him seriously. No, no, I no. So one second, then that is where people like you and I come in, na? That we may need to make them take. Certain things seriously. The other problem where I disagree with you is, you know, I don't see any reason why anybody in India uh, starts cutting slack for the Pakistani politician. Hmm. You know, we keep saying, "Ke yar, no, he was not entirely in charge, or uh, it's his political compulsion that he has to come to India and abuse us in India because that's his political compulsion." I don't care. If he comes into my country and he abuses me, he abuses my prime minister. He abuses. Uh, he 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 wants to uh, tear my country apart, uh, and he does it in a very nice, sweet uh, pansy accent. I don't care. I don't care about But his compulsion. Look okay. at the recent visit of Bilawal. Yeah, so the way the just because was... he said pansy, you are on Bilawal. No, 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 no. Please, we are not. No, so Abhijit will also write that we are homophobic, etc. Yes, he is saying that. We are not. No, no, but the fact of the matter is that he is saying that in that type of accent, he is talking about it. I don't give a damn about his compulsion. He needs to learn and, and I, it's good that uh, Dr. Jaishankar said what he said. That if you are a good guest, right, I will be a good host. But if you are not a good guest, I am not going to be a good host. I think that is unacceptable. Get on to Bilawal. I just want to make one thing about Bilawal. The most dangerous statement that he made when he went back to when he told the Pak journalist in Goa, somebody asked him about G20. He said, "Of course, we oppose G20 in Srinagar. At the time when it is being taken place, we'll teach them such a lesson." वक्त आने पर ऐसा जवाब देंगे जो याद रहेगा. याद रहेगा. Now this was the mask totally slipped. All this while he was telling the G20. Uh, sorry, SEO, and he was telling the uh, Indian media, peace, peace, terrorism, peace, nahi hai. we are doing getting rid of terrorism because of our sake, not because of Indian all that. And this is what he actually feels. The MoFA, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Pakistan has tried to deny it and soft pedal it, but they cannot get over the fact that he said, at the appropriate time, we will teach them such a lesson they will not forget. This so is an open now, thing for terrorism. So now you tell me that can uh, if God forbid any attack happens. Can you turn around and say that the political establishment didn't know this was the military establishment no, which conducted? No, you can't. In this case, it is clear. You can't. In this case, it is absolutely hundred percent clear. So this is just clear. what I was trying to draw a parallel between what uh, Bilawal said, what Benazir has said before that when she said "jug jug mo mo han han," when she was talking about assassinating a sitting governor in Jammu and Kashmir. True. So you scratch them a little bit. Each and every one of them, you cannot say deniability. They are so, there. So you know, for the Bhuttos, it is especially true. You know why? They carry the curse of Lucky Bai. Ha, ye inki ek hmm. uh, theory. It's hai. I think no, no, it's very important know, for people to know. Yes, people. Because tell us. his uh, grandfather, Bhutto's father, Shah Nawaz, he married and fell in love. Uh, which Bhutto? You need to explain now. Shah Nawaz Bhutto, the who was Zulfikar uh, Ali Bhutto's father. father. Hmm. He fell in love with a. Uh, Hindu dancing girl, uh, Lucky Bai, and married her way back in 1924, I think it was. Then converted her to Islam, and she took the name of Khurshid. Because she came from a humble background, and these were big feudals, so she was badly treated. So Zulfikar's uh, mother. mother was yeah. a Hindu. Yeah. Okay. And born a Hindu. Born a Hindu, then she was converted. In the feudal family, they looked down upon her and didn't treat her well. Because she was a new convert. Not only that, that because and you know, dancing, yeah, yeah, and you know, not of this thing. Ha. So when Zulfikar Ali Bhutto was growing up, he was aware of this, his mother being mistreated, and he had a huge complex that because she was a Hindu, therefore to cover his Hindu origins, partial Hindu origins, he became vehemently anti-India, vehemently anti-India. You know when um, A. Q. Khan. Uh, said that he will ca come back to Pakistan and help building the bond. Uh, this thing, but to bang the table, he said, "Now we'll show these Hindu bastards." Sorry to use that. Similarly with Benazir, same thing is with Bilawal. 
you know they are insecure about the hindu blood in them and therefore they have to be even more anti india than let's say the sharifs so how come uh, imran khan doesn't have that baggage of niazi he's hmm. not defensive like what you are saying uh, bilawal is about his hindu the lineage the first they sindhis they sindhis and then this hindu lineage imran khan doesn't have the sharifs don't have that no i'm talking uh, i'm not talking about sharif i'm talking no, no, about then, the Bila- sharif niazi the, shari- the sharifs always why do you think Imran Khan never says I'm Imran Khan Niazi. Right. But the Sharifs will always add Niazi to his name. And even Prime Minister Modi it. said that. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Yeah. So it irritates the hell out of Imran Khan. Yeah. Huh. So everybody actually. So the linkage is to huh. AK Niazi. Yeah. Huh. So there are skeletons in the cupboard. Yeah. Which... yeah. But but yeah. But Imran, you know, in a sense, partly given his background, uh, you know, at at one level. it's irritating for him that why are you associating me with that guy i you know he's not even my relative really uh, so it's irritating for him but at another level it's not a baggage that he carries that i am also a niazi so i must avenge what happened to a niazi i don't think uh-huh. that is the case okay. but imran has always been an islamist and if you hear what mr g parthasarthi when he was i think he was council Council's general in those days Karachi, yeah. uh, what he was told out there Uh, about how imran khan thinks that when he is playing cricket against india it's a jihad you know th- so th- that that, that, that warped yeah. mindset like has always been there has and yeah. you know yeah. all of them and, yeah and what pisses me off is you know when people like siddu and gavaskar and others oh imran is such a good friend are he is not your friend yaar he is he does it because it suits him at some level he uses it these these are not friends he is not your friend but you know try and explain it how do you explain this to a siddu i mean why do the pakistanis call him taliban khan you know he has that islamist streak in him he wanted the taliban to open an office in pakistan you know mm. and the ttp when uh, the taliban when they were negotiating ttp they nominated imran khan as one of the interlocutors with the government of pakistan and he said that will be your voice yeah. i will be your ambassador yeah and, and, and you know very early on in his career he was the understudy of hamid gul mm. right and everybody knows what hamid gul stand f- stood for yes. right Hamid Gul is the guy who was patronizing Imran Khan, and and when he was forming his party and he was moving forward yeah. on it, it was people like so they also tried to rope in uh, this fellow Abdul Sattar Edi, and then Edi did not want to be a part of it, uh, and Edi felt threatened by what these guys were trying to do. He tried so to stay away from the politics. He, yeah, he yeah, tried yeah, to stay away from it, but the fact of the matter remains that uh, these guy, you know, Imran has always had that streak in him, hmm. and. Uh, that is uh, that is why when you know when i see uh, many of these indian cricketers old timers hmm. fawn over him my friend imran and all hey, you guys are so dumb yeah imran khan uh, who was this flamboyant in the 80s who would come parmeshwar godrej ke sath bombay mein he was you know he was with photographed with i think zina taman if i'm not mistaken and with all the bollywood celebrities wo imran khan alag tha ya usme he was the same imran uh, it was just camouflage or he didn't have just political ambition because, because he was a playboy he, he found his playboy image in what he was doing in uh, england uh, a very convenient thing to do इसका एक टर्म है आजकल लेकिन मैं यूज नहीं करूंगा टेल मी नाउ अबाउट बिलावल लेट्स टॉक अबाउट दैट एंड व्हाट ही डिड व्हेन ही केम टू गोवा दैट हाउ यू नो ही कम्स इन देयर एंड ही ट्राइज टू बी दिस स्वॉफ फॉरेन मिनिस्टर डिड डिड इंडिया अंडर एस्टिमेट हिम दैट यहां आके ही विल नॉट ही केम विद एन एजेंडा आई थिंक आई डोंट थिंक सो द इंडिया एंड स्पेशली द इंडियन इन द इंडियन मीडिया डिडंट अंडरस्टैंड और डिडंट असेस व्हाट हिज एजेंडा वाज ही वाजंट एड्रेसिंग is he is coming for the sco meeting he is not coming for indo pak relations there was nothing he could have said or done to further indo pak relations all his messaging was back to pakistan and i think the message that he was sending was specially to rahul pindi to the ghq that look i can be a much better interlocutor for against india i am suave i am articulate and i'll be much better than imran khan so he was giving he was messaging rahul pindi he's already done that he was there in new york and he uh, he used yeah, this is in abusive india. language yeah but that is one thing using the indian prime minister language in the prime minister but here in india he articulated all that the army wanted to hear he articulated about terrorism he articulated about india going has to go back from 5th august 2019 walk back in case he want to have a dialogue with pakistan okay. the onus he put the onus on india 
In fact, it's just the other way and around. And then he talked about Kulbushan Jadav. Yeah. The only thing I was surprised he didn't talk about was Balochistan. He didn't mention that at all. No, why would he? I, Because that didn't su- uh, suit his yeah. agenda. Yeah, what, what I'm trying to say is that when Sharmal Sheikh happened, they put Balochistan on the table, right? And uh, after that, I would have thought that he would talk about that also. That's the only thing that he didn't so speak about. So he talked about Kulbushan Jadav. I don't know. Yeah, but I'll tell you something. One thing, when you look at the Sharmal Sheikh declaration and you look at the text of what is written, I don't even I flew into a, a, a rage at that point of time simply at the mention of the word Balochistan but what is written in that de- declaration the 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 what is written is that the prime minister of Pakistan told the prime minister of India of certain developments in Balochistan good you can tell me about developments in Sindh for all than, I care there was more than that no there was nothing more than that no, no, in the, the Sharmal Sheikh declaration Uh, you the, you brought the the fact is that at Sharmal Sheikh आप अपना एक इंटरनल इशू मेरे साथ डिस्कस करते हैं first time, time Balochistan was brought on the table and India said fine you have something to talk we can talk about yeah. it the point is that at that point of time Balochistan and we should was, have continued to talk about Balochistan subsequently yeah why the, did we not do it yeah that is a no, different but, uh, point altogether Shushan, when the prime minister they were trying to bring equivalence you see Kulbushan Jadav when they raise Samjhota when they they are trying to equate themselves with you know we keep talking there is a bit of documented they talk about samjhota equating it with 2611 yeah but they were on some samjhota mein to but that's also because the indian who, side the allowed treachery, the treachery happened from the indian side right so that's what i'm saying that because the, you wanted to do some yeah. political point scoring within india and you diluted your case by implicating other people so who should not have been implicated so that dossier exchange jo ho no. gaya kept no. on doing that anyway that was in the past now if we talk about bilawal if he was trying if he was trying to send a message back to the army that i am a better interlocutor i can play the pakistan card better than an imran khan can does he need to say that pakistan is already i mean pakistan establishment has already burnt its bridges with imran so they are not looking for an option to imran isn't it yeah of course they are they are, they okay. are now no. now what is their option right now uh, the option is imran is out either they pick up somebody from his party who will be subservient and you know but i i don't think they are going to touch pti right now or they go for somebody in the pmln right mm-hmm. but if it's going to be mia saab coming back nawaz sharif they they i think going to be very allergic to that mm-hmm. so it's either shabash sharif they would be very allergic to even maryam coming to the fore uh, or the option is that if you go into a next election you have a very split verdict the people's party manages to get about 70 80 seats about 45 odd in Uh, in in Sindh, another ten fifteen in uh, this South place. Punjab. South Punjab, a smattering from here and there, about five seven in Balochistan. Uh, they are in kind of pole position because mm-hmm. you will again have a kind of a coalition government coming into power, which suits the army also, right? Uh, and then when you have a formulation like that uh, coming into power, then uh, why not Bilawal Bhutto as the prime minister? You know, young. Uh, connects with the uh, international media connects with the international community speaks in this nice pansy accent uh, which everybody likes these days uh, so all of that you know it's called metrosexual okay yeah or okay. maybe even that uh, is an okay so i'm term. i'm i'm my vocabulary is limited but <laughs> thanks for correcting me okay. so he you, uh, you, uh, you know speaks in this very metrosexual accent and all of that so so one is that strategy of his now what is he trying to do he is basically trying to take a leaf out of the book of his grandfather and his mother ah. they have also used the same template you abuse india to uh, you know gain Tari, political capital the, um, yeah. yeah you know gain political capital within the country right bhutto did it after 65 war uh, and you know everybody swore by bhutto when he alleged a sell out in kashmir uh, benazir did it later when you know kashmir but this yeah. guy has started doing it now so it's it's very transparent for anybody who looks at it very carefully so one is that he's he's making that sales pitch to these guys the other is that he is projecting himself that look i came to india and i abused india in india look the thing is that you know and the pakistanis are reacting uh, why did uh, bilawal say what uh, why did dr jay shankar react in this way what did they expect that dr jay shankar will keep quiet why mm-hmm. should he keep quiet here is this and dr jay shankar's uh, press conference happened after uh, bilawals right uh, 
and and clearly what bilawal said in his press conference had to be answered which is exactly what do they do you did. think that uh, uh, you know there, there's been criticism also in pakistan that uh, bilawal should have probably just done a um, you know a zoom uh interaction he shouldn't have come out here and uh, i think there and uh, there are articles also which have written that the meet in goa had come down to you know becoming another agra like situation do you agree with that no you know just one other point just before answering sure, your question sure. you see right now the interesting situation is that imran khan is a big no no for the army so both pmln and the ppp are jockeying for favors with the army what pmln has adopted is out and out support for the army hmm. you know shahbaz sharif keeps tweeting in favor of the army bilawal has taken the route because of zardari's training and zardari's you know sort of teaching him to go and bash india so now let's see so the army asim uni has got these two hats it'll be very interesting to see it come elections if they're held this year or whenever they're held which hat do they pick up on okay. so bilawal is using this track shahbaz sharif is using that track and so is Uh, so the person who becomes prime minister is whoever the army picks up yes we have okay. the not to okay okay right despite the army's protestation that we will not interfere in politics they are going to ultimately because if they don't interfere in politics imran khan is coming back okay. i mean you know because of his popularity hmm. now the uh, the uh, the question that the agra parallel to goa no 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 see that was a summit you know this was from foreign ministers and as bhutto i would agree with him that he showed their commitment to the sco you see Pakistan is not a member of G20 it is not a member of BRICS it is not a member of RIC it is not a member of G7 what are they members of SCO becomes very important for them and therefore to show their solidarity with SCO and then China bada sodi hai tumhara defense minister to aaye nahi you better show up hmm. so he took this opportunity to come and i'm sure Rizari would have told him listen you have to go this is where you can make your mark this is where you can get the attention of the people over there and just look at it In Samarkand, six months ago, when the foreign ministers met, Lavrov didn't meet Bhutto. They refused to meet Bhutto. Today in Goa, they hugged. They hugged. There was a very warm meeting. Yeah. So look at the kind of advance. That Though Bhutto I don't think the Lavrov was, uh, uh, you know, uh, knew that he is going to be pulled in into a hug. There was some kind of a, you know, uh, resistance or whatever. Not resistance, but a little awkwardness because hugging is not what happens at foreign ministers' meets. Yeah. But here, so he was had this. great meeting every at least for appearances a very warm meeting hmm. then he met uzbekistan he met this so he presented himself and showed his commitment to seo and then he got the opportunity to lay down pakistan's line very very strongly hmm. i mean some of the comments that he made you know this um, wolf whistle on terrorism and weaponizing you, terrorism yeah and what, that, uh, 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 explain to me what that term means i don't know i couldn't figure it out myself yeah. i think the, dr jay shankar handled the reply very well on that uh -huh. then he talks about uh, the bjp treats every muslim as a terrorist are what are you saying you know on, on what basis so are you saying this is the this? easiest thing to do is to uh, used to blame a person to be islamophobic yeah. you know in the in it's become the easiest thing to beat a person ki tum islam you know it's like in america tum racist ho mm. you know you uh, you are anti black you are racist so uh, you can't recover from that yeah. kind of a slur. and there are two places where he slipped up he said the ppp's policy is always to have good relations with india is he the foreign minister of the ppp or is the foreign minister of pakistan i think he missed out uh. over it then he said my mother was a victim of terrorism all along the line has been that the musharraf got her killed <coughs> it was an assassination not a terrorist attack yes maybe if whoever was hired was he trying to say that they no longer consider musharraf being responsible now these are small small subtleties which somebody who studied the subject very well i think he made these two big blunders then of course what he said about the g20 in srinagar this is in the interview that he said that my mother was a victim of terrorism yeah that you know when i sit before the people this whole islamophobia thing uh, that all muslims are terrorists all falls flat because i am not only in the case of pakistan not only the victims i am a personal victim basically he is monetizing his mother's death politically monetizing it but, but he let let's put it as starkly as that when but he she accuses she wasn't a victim of terrorism no no one second huh? uh, uh, you know when he says that somebody else is trying to politicize terrorism what did he, what is the term weaponization weaponize what he is doing is monetizing terrorism for his political purpose interesting by saying that my mother is you know has has sacrificed her life his mother was the person who created the taliban 
they came under her watch mm-hmm. his mother is the person who was in the seat of power when all hell broke loose in kashmir and over 100000 people died subsequently right in that terrorism and people are still dying so all that blood is on on his mother's hands and now on his hand so they, and i know, think they, i think where we make a mistake look i'm all for diplomatic language i'm all for diplomatic proprieties but when you are dealing with these kind of guys na then you have to use and and the good thing is that there are many occasions when the ministry of external affairs is using appropriate language to target these guys you know uh, punjabi nahi use karte but they should uh, you know mothership of terrorism uh, there are a number of interesting uh, phrases which they have coined no, no i think dr jayashankar made this formulation that he is the promoter uh, the uh, a couple of other things uh, of terrorism uh, yeah wait yeah. let me dig that out spokesperson of yeah, spokesperson uh, uh, terrorism, of terrorism ter- industry yeah yeah which is a fact which is a fact so i think uh um, in in bilawal's case uh, what has happened is that he uh, uh i think this positioning which he has been trying to do look if they are actually into i from an indian point of view i think what is important is the signaling of the visit number one he has cured the pitch for uh, shabash sharif if shabash sharif does come in july right for the summit meeting i think he has he has spoiled the grounds for that meeting but if at all anything was going to come out of it but uh, even more importantly i think what he has done is he has signaled uh, the fact that the pakistanis are not interested in even a modicum of normalization absolutely right because if they were he could have played this very differently yeah. but he decided not to you see as soon as he so, would say that you go back to the pre or you go back to the 4th august 2019 position India has to walk back, restore Article 370. I mean, what world are you living in? As Dr. Jay Shankar said, that's not happening. Smell the coffee. Article oh. 370 is history. Mm. Mm. But he has taken the same position as Imran Khan did. That so long as Article 370 is not restored, no dialogue, no trade with India. Bilawal is saying the same thing. Dr. Jay Shankar said that his Pakistani counterpart is the promoter, justifier, and spokesperson of the terrorism industry. Yeah. This is what he had said. Promoter. So the weaponization of terror. Ka. This was a fantastic reply to him. Nay sir, isn't my reply even better that he is monetizing it for yeah. his political benefit? No, that's, that's, that's a good point. And yeah. by calling her a victim of terrorism, he has demolished the entire argument of the PPP that she was actually assassinated no, by. Um, no, in fact, worse, he has insulted victims of terrorism by saying that his mother is a victim of terrorism. She is not a victim of terrorism. Yeah. So yeah. there's other nonsense. You know, uh, uh, the thing is that Sushant and I, we we have friends. uh who are pakistanis we've interacted with a number of them and all of them these are these the liberal pakistanis you know they all believe that the only person who can deliver on peace between india and pakistan are the bhuttos is just benazir and then her progeny you know no way yeah but you try and tell them they are, they are the most just ask them who lucky bhai just ask them about lucky bhai no no but nahin. people's party is the most pro establishment party but in pakistan but nobody Pakistani. believes that this is what i'm trying no, to say look then, yaar, uh, look nobody believes it does not mean that it's I'm not true i'm talking about pakistanis no even indians look, so, so look e- even in india i, I, I met a pakistani friend you know some of the journalists who had come one of them is a decent guy i met him uh, and i was telling him something i said listen you know all the acha indian journalists also dumb down everything pardon my saying this in the company of journalists <laughs> अगर क्या हमारा क्या बन गया कि पाकिस्तान इज एंड द पाकिस्तानी स्कीप स्प्रेडिंग इट एंड द इंडियन स्कीप सेइंग हाँ हाँ बिल्कुल ठीक है पाकिस्तान इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन इंडियन इलेक्शंस आई सेंट हिम अ रिपोर्ट समबडी हैड डन दिस मीडिया एनालिसिस इन टेन थाउजेंड वर्ड्स दैट मोदी स्पोक इन ट्वेंटी नाइन वर्ड्स वर पाकिस्तान इट वॉज दैट इंपॉर्टेंट Now Pakistanis think that they are very important. They are not. The elections were fought on something completely different. It was not the election was not fought on Pulwama. The election was fought on social welfare. This Labharti thing, which then at least in the UP election came out very openly. But you've dumbed it down. 
ke pulwama 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 but even and pakistani media, think they are very important pakistani social media even in 2014 they said the same thing because at that time if you remember nawaz sharif had said that budi aurat or something mm. like that he mm. had said that why does india keep complaining to um, uh, he said that to, about manmohan singh to, about manmohan singh he said why does india keep going to america to complain about pakistan jaise wo gaon ki aurat budi aurat mm. complain so at that time mr modi who was chief minister of uh, gujarat turned around and said that how dare you insult my, my prime, prime minister, minister. Mm, yeah. so that became a thing so the pakistanis were like look we are so important for india mm. they don't get it that you know they not pakistanis hate being ignored by india mm. you know there is something that they sort of really rises them up are we are so important abhi dekhna in my uh, comment list on on the podcast will be the same thing on the one hand you are saying that we are not important but on the other hand your you, podcast is all nah, about nah, pakistan <laughs> because But, arrest of imran khan yeah. is a very big thing yeah. and moreover the point is that it's so easy for people in social media to say why don't you ignore pakistan why not concentrate on china which is the bigger enemy or the i mean it's stated enemy now is a bigger country and the bigger threat as compared to pakistan what do you have to say to that because i've heard you in many uh, you know uh, podcasts and uh, discussions where you say that you ignore pakistan at the at your own peril It is absolutely true. You see, let's make a distinction. China is a bigger enemy. China is a more dangerous enemy. But you cannot ignore Pakistan because Pakistan can. You know, if you if you turn your back on Pakistan, that's where you will get hit. But you see, again, in this Goa uh, thing, how come there was nobody interviewed the Chinese foreign minister and asked about de-escalation on the border or the you're facing? Everybody went after Bilawal. See here again. we at the media i think i'm i'm sorry to uh, no no that's fine i uh, i understand yeah. completely so the, come on yeah the chinese foreign minister was here i'm sure he must have been waiting for somebody to ask him for an interview nobody asked him or the so russian you, or the russian cannot and we must not ignore pakistan look at what happened in rajouri you think that pakistan is in a mess you've had two attacks with five five indian soldiers have died hmm. you cannot ignore pakistan and you know as i it's a radicalized pakistan and it's a hungry pakistan it will become an angry pakistan and the only way the establishment is going to divert that anger is towards india therefore we need to be very very watchful and very very careful of what is happening in in pakistan because a lot of this uh, bakwas is going to land up on our doorstep so how Smita, how is it going Smita, to land up Smita, Smita, uh, i think what people need a clarity on is Uh, when they say now why are you giving so much importance to pakistan it is one thing to study the enemy it is one thing to focus on the enemy hmm. and it is another thing to do all this puppy jappi nonsense which we keep doing you know no, we are the same people you know all that nonsense which happens ek koi hai ek koi hai ji sara ha ha this acha and then this this familiar trope asi ek koi hai ye to ji politicians ne humko divide kiya baki to hum bade acche the agar itne acche the to partition kyun kiya bhai tomato khate hum bhi tomato khate hain nahi agar itne acche the aur logon ke beech mein koi problem hi nahi thi to fir partition kyun kiya ye darare to katle aam kyun kiya ha wo politician ne karwaya tha ki khud tumne ek dusre ko mara tha nahi nahi they see this हमारे दरमियान तो कोई दिक्कत ही नहीं है प्रॉब्लम ही नहीं है बकवाली कोई नहीं है नॉनसेंस राइट सो बट दिस इज ऑल आई एम सॉरी टू से दिस इज ऑल विद द पंजाबीज अमंग के हु टू या या ऑफ कोर्स बिकॉज़ दे आर सक्सेस फॉर पनिशमेंट ना लाइक यू नो दे दे लव गेटिंग द बैक साइड्स किक्ड एंड देन वांट इट अगेन एंड अगेन एंड अगेन दे स्टार्ट एंजॉयिंग इट आफ्टर द टाइम सो मच ऑफ इंडोक्ट्रिनेशन इन पाकिस्तान स्पेशली इन पंजाब वी आर वेरी फॉन्ड ऑफ नरेटिंग दिस इफ यू सी द कायदा आई हैव सीन द कायदा You know, A for Apple, B for Ball. वहाँ से होते हैं Z for Zalim, and एक सरदार जी के फोटोग्राफ है वहाँ पे. So the mind of a five-year-old child, all सरदार और Zalim, does a daku, and you have a Hindu with a big uh, and, and a Janeu and a Janeu Chorti. and a Bodhi. Choti. So the mind of a child, five-year-old child, all Hindus are dakus. Now, if you're ingrained this from the age of five, by the time you come out of school, forget the madrasa. I'm talking about government schools. By the time you come out of there, what are you going to be? Hmm. So this is the kind of hatred. This is all, you know, when they threw puppy jappy and Indians going there, you know, simple Indians. Oh, उन्हें पैसे नहीं लेते. Taxi driver was so nice and an arkali bazaar. I didn't have to pay anything. This is all superficial for three days. So I used to ask these people, how many days did you stay there? Try staying there for a month and see how the scales fall, hmm. and what the actual reality. जो वीजा किसको मिलेगा एक मंथ रहने के लिए. No, no. When the visas were available, when yeah. people used to go for cricket matches, people would go on visits. 
So they would spend three days, four days over there and mm. come back with this kind of an impression. Mm. But if you stay there long enough in Punjab, you know the attitude of the Sindhis, the attitude of the Baloch, attitude of the Pathan is very different than to what it is because the indoctrination of the Punjabi Muslim. And especially the memory of the riots. You know, you keep saying that uh, th this is going to land in our doorsteps. I've heard you say this many times. What is it that we should be fearful of? The collapse of Pakistan? What is it that we should be fearful of? See, I'll tell you of? one thing. For example, it's, it's a very rough example. It may not be entirely accurate. But supposing tomorrow, 250,000 or 500,000 people start marching towards the Indian border because there's no water, there's no food from Sindh and South Punjab. Then they start marching towards the Indian border. Pakistan army may not let them come. They may not be able to hold them. What will you do? What do you do at your border checkpost? If so many find this hajum are aapki taraf. Because it's humanitarian. You know, they don't have water. They don't have food. Hmm. Or we there need... are bullets flying and bombs falling. Yeah. Hmm. Right? And they're trying to escape. And this it. is a radicalized population. So you have to think about it now when you have time. You know, as I said, radicalized. Then, ye, ye ek situation hai, Nein, Sushant. Then, then why do you say that we should we want a Pakistan which is in turmoil? Because if turmoil mein hai, this might happen to yeah, us. Dekho, ab, dekho, ab, my there is a spectrum of possibilities. Possibilities. Right? Okay. What Mr. Deveshwar is talking about is the, the hmm. worst case, hmm. right? Hmm. The best case in my book is a weak, tottering, which is now Pakistan. On ventilator, basically. Yes, this is the same. 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 Perfect. Right? It works for me. Hmm. Uh, so, one is this, you know, this weak, uh, unstable uh, Pakistan, which, and, and poor, hmm. which works for me. Right? This is my best case scenario. My worst case scenario is what Mr. Deveshwar said. But then between those two, there is an entire range of possibilities which can happen. Mm. So what, what we need is not to be fearful that, and we should not have this Mother India complex that, oh, we must try and save Pakistan. We can't do it even if we wanted to, and we should not want to do it, right? Uh, but what you have to prepare yourself for, and this, uh, these are challenges that you've had even a millennia back. So, what you need to prepare yourself for is a disturbed frontier. An endless war, which is what Mr. Deveshwar and I were in a panel the other day. And this is exactly what I was saying, that you have to be prepared for something which I call an endless war. Now, this is not a war of the Ukraine-Russia type, but this is a war in which your security forces will be constantly keeping these elements at bay. Now, somewhere you might have to go inside and do certain things. Somewhere you might have to carve out some kind of buffer zones. Somewhere you will see ungoverned spaces or ungovernable spaces in Pakistan and then some kind of warlords being out there and then, you know, some kind of raids taking place to try and get something out of what is India right now. You have to be preparing okay. for all those scenarios. Dynamic situation it's is a, what I say that also, we on need the borders. To make sure and study Pakistan. Why has Pakistan got in such a mess that it is where people are dying for atta? You know, stampedes are taking place. We need to look at our food situation. We need to look at our water situation. We need to look at our, what is happening in our schools in terms of what education. Is, what is the parallel that which is happening in Pakistan? Why should we look at our food security, our education and look at Pakistan? They're no, because, different you know, you because have... this is how this uh, the spiral has gone out of control in Pakistan. They, were, they have the largest contiguous irrigation network in the world. Till about two or three years ago, they had surplus wheat, which they would send out. Today, they have to import three million tons of wheat. Hmm. You know why? Because... The acreage under wheat has been reduced. They don't have enough fertilizers. They don't have enough water. Let's not be so... I mean, what I'm saying is just study it. Yeah. Are our food stocks adequate? Hmm. That we don't have the same kind of a situation? Yeah, so that we can learn from what is happening, what happened in Sri Lanka, how they recovered. In fact, uh, Imran Khan's speech itself was that, that, you know, uh, Bloomberg report he quotes in which he says, I mean, the, the video that he's made and put out today was that Bloomberg says that uh, uh, our situation, jo hai, wo, uh, Sri Lanka wali situation se bhi kharab hai. He say, talks about uh, the economic, financial crisis. Uh, yeah, economic situation of Pakistan is worse than what Sri Lanka's situation is, is what he's saying. And of course, he's blaming the Sharif brothers and he's blaming the current uh, political establishment 
establishment while he was all the time talking about the military establishment he's even blamed that so let's let me come to the sharif brothers where are they in this fight uh, which imran khan is having with the army you said that you know they are they with, with the, the establishment army, yeah. they are with the establishment <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely right so where does where does that leave with maryam why is she not an option for the pakistan army you see in the case of i mean i'm not sure that she is not an option i for one yeah. they will look at their best bet see maryam initially because she is young and inexperienced she came across very strongly in the beginning when nawaz sharif was dismissed she was brutal criticism of the army she has now toned down after being told by shahbaz and being told the problem with maryam is that she has many competitors shahbaz sharif his son hamza sharif nawaz sharif also wants to come back and become fourth time prime minister you know so and a lot of people in the pmln khaka nabasi for example says that i cannot uh, accept her as my leader hmm. so maryam and she is very young i mean not very young she is youngish enough that she has time to go i think is she politically she, as mature as say shahbaz or uh, imran she has had no administrative experience no. shahbaz has governed a province you know he has been a hands on chief minister he hasn't done so effectively as a prime minister so she doesn't have that she but she anybody who can match imran khan's oratory Mm-hmm. and connect with the crowd it is maryam nawaz Look, not she Shibaz. has the charisma yeah she gets the crowds she has a connect with the people uh she is very feisty uh so she has everything that is needed in becoming a mass leader mm. i am not very sure sir if nawaz sharif would want to become prime minister again maybe uh just yes, pakistan because a lot of people are saying that uh he is now looking to hand over his legacy to maryam the only problem is that uh, there is an element of impetuosity in uh, maryam hmm. you know you see that she she is quick to uh, you know uh, get fired up hmm. which is in some cases which is good and in some cases it can be a little disaster yeah, okay, i know, i personally if he just to uh, i think um, nawaz sharif does want to come back and become prime minister just to prove a point to the judiciary maybe woh jo nikala woh hmm. harrods ki shopping to hogi nahi fir oh वो भी भी जा सकता है। जा वो बर्गर शर्गर खू खा के आएगा नीड बर्गर सो इट्स जस्ट टू प्रूव अ पॉइंट दैट ही वाज डन बैडली विद बिकॉज़ ऑफ़ द जुडिशरी बिकॉज ऑफ साकेत मिसाल देन चीफ जस्टिस ही वांट्स टू कम बैक एंड प्रूव अ पॉइंट एंड देन मे बी हैंड ओवर comment made by uh, one person who worked in the PMO of Mr Vajpayee Mr Sudhinder Kulkarni who said that uh, you know this was no way to conduct uh, foreign policy the what happened in goa what was needed was for the indian foreign minister to take the pakistan foreign minister to the beach and hold hands and and improve relations like that so no. mr kulkarni first destroyed vajpayee's government then destroyed mr adwani's career now he is hell bent on destroying mr modi it is mr modi is good sense that he keeps kulkarni at an arm's length not at the an arm's length the reason i'm saying uh, you know with mr kulkarni is yes uh, sushant is right so uh, in the sense that um, mr kulkarni helped uh, advani write that book, book. on jena and yeah. that was the end of no no, no, no not the book he wrote that thing in that visitors book Advani wrote on the visitors book when he went to Jinnah's mausoleum. Mausoleum. So I think what pulled down Advani was that thing which he yeah, wrote in yeah, that visitors yeah. book. Also, you see, very said, very, very, he... very actually gave a compliment uh, to, to Jinnah. Jinnah that he was secular. That Correct. He, he didn't write a book. He said that Jinnah was secular, secular. Yeah. and he got his gyan from Sudhinder Kulkarni. So, ab aise bande ki akal se chalo. Sorry for one minute. Let's not dismiss, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Kulkarni. The fact is that these were there were two people in Vajpayee's uh, PMO, which is Mr. Kulkarni and Mr. Dulat. Right? These were the two people who were in the PMO. I'm not saying, mm. and this is. this the i'm again saying that you know every time mr dr manmohan singh is blamed for his pakistan policy but it was a bjp government with mr vajpayee who's the icon of bjp prime mm. minister of you know iconic prime minister he is the one who had two people in his pmo who today say these things with mr dulak but he also had brijesh mishra but he also had brijesh mishra sure he had brijesh mishra but what is the point you you have mr dulak out there and who's written a book along with and you know he was in the RAW and then went as advisor to uh, the PMO and then you had Mr Kulkarni now these are the two people who advocate about how 
Mr. Modi is extremely wrong in this hawkish policy towards Pakistan and that not having talks is not the right thing to do and that India has a wrong foreign policy. So you tell me that we can look in hindsight now and say that that PMO was wrong. But that was iconic, right? Yeah, yeah, but look at this. Today, both Imran Khan and Bilawal Bhutto have clearly drawn the line. They have said unless you walk back on the 5th August 2019 changes, there will be no talks, no dialogue. Where is where, what wriggle room is left for diplomats and people to talk? They are telling you, "We have not done anything until you restore 370." Now, what will you do? So, Dullat Sahib will say, "Let's restore it." I won't comment on Mr. Dullat. Obviously, it's your responsibility. I understand. But this is a fight. There is no wriggle room left in Indo-Pak dialogue. Where is the wriggle room? Look, I think that the Pakistan government has no wriggle room left in Indo-Pak dialogue. Where is the wriggle room? Look, I think this is perfect. I, I don't. I, I agree with you 100. percent I think this is perfect. We the, don't need the to talk to them. The Pakistanis have boxed themselves into a corner, and I see no reason why we need to create space for them to wriggle out of that corner. Have you seen that uh, show, TV show, Diplomat? Which is new. So, in that, he says that talk to everybody, talk haan. to even the terrorists, talk haan. to everybody, because that's what diplomacy is all about. Haan. See, you go and say, "I want to talk to you." The guy says, "I don't even want to talk to you." What will you say? You look like a fool. Are they want to talk to you? Yeah, they want. Go. वो तो that is posturing भाई that we will not talk till Kashmir is resolved because for no, them no not till Kashmir that is resolved that is that दुखती रहती है they are thinking resolve in the sense of resolving now Article three yeah. until you walk back yeah unless yeah. you walk so they want us to walk back on everything they would want us to walk back right up till nah. yeah everything so, we would also want back ना nah? we also want to walk back कि पीओ के वापस करो नहीं but पहले तो talk talk तो होती थी ना now what uh, what Bilawal said that India has changed the dynamics because of these changes in 5th august and therefore it is up to india to create the atmosphere for talks i mean if we don't want to talk hmm. they don't get it still we now this is what it is we don't want to talk now you at one point of time you said they don't want to talk also no they don't want to talk because of this to us it makes no difference because we are not going to change 5th august 2019 sure. right and if they don't want to talk with us we are very happy not talking to them sanugi neither for trade Nor for talks. Hmm. Look, let's face it. Number one, when you talk about uh, diplomacy, you know, uh, diplomacy is not an end in itself. कि आप बात ही करते रहो, party करते रहो, you know, you just keep interacting with people. It is with a purpose, right? It has to be a, as part of a larger plan. See, uh, so, so Shahid, if, if there is no plan, if then you're a democracy and you you have this relationship that I will not talk, it's not a mature way of of being a a superpower or a or a power or a country which aims to be a superpower. Way, but Smita, you know, I won't talk to you. You know, no, it's no, like Smita, you're going back to what. Smita, if he doesn't want no, to no, talk, no, but one second, one second, one second, one second. He will any day talk to you. He's in such a situation today. वो तो सिर्फ कह रहा है it's just posturing. No, but they are willing. Why, they why do I get? Face value, yeah. no, why should I? Why should I give in to his posturing? Yeah. I want him to. Step off this high horse that he has climbed. ठीक है. Number one. Number two. This whole thing के यार. You know, you are a Can democracy, and that you need to talk. Look, number one, very often people misunderstand. You still have a mission in Pakistan. Okay. At different levels, you huh. still have conversations going on. Huh. Those conversations are still happening. What is not happening is this this love fest which used to happen in the past, right? And if that's not happening, good, it's not happening. Number one. Number two, uh, there is no structured dialogue of the sorts which was happening in the past. Now. Frankly, from our point of view, okay, maybe at the back channel, some people are talking. They are trying to sort certain things out, or at least keep, you know, the the business level of the relationship going for whatever that's worth. Yeah. But that's where it ends. Now, if you want a political level dialogue, then what are you going to do about it? If you have red lines, I have bigger red lines, and you have not addressed any one of those. Do you think pa the Pakistan army can ever? Walk down. When Bajwa was there in March 2021, if you remember the Islamabad <coughs> Security Dialogue, he talked about changing geopolitics into geoeconomics. He talked about let's forget the past and move. We had the ceasefire on the LOC. Pakistan also agreed to import cotton and sugar from India, and this was signed on by Imran Khan as Commerce Minister. When it went to him as Prime Minister, he turned it back. For a change, the army was on board to have trade with India. Hmm. Bajwa was in, you know, was uh, interested in this, but Imran Khan, because he felt left out, and he felt that he is this superhuman guy. Are you mere se nahi pucha? How can you do this? Band karo isko, nahi karenge. 
so there is this one group no but sir I, from what i have heard uh, imran was very much in the loop there were other people who were not in the loop kureshi kureshi and shireen mazari you know that doctor strange love of pakistan uh, a couple of other such people and when these guys kind of uh, got to know that you know when the ecc passed that uh, resolution and then they were going to go to the cabinet that is when shah mahmood qureshi jumped in this shireen mizari jumped in a couple of other people jumped in and no. they told imran ke yaar lute jaoge agar kiya you know you will get wiped out politically this is not a sustainable proposition the fact is that imran khan is so kaan ka kachcha that smq and uh, shireen mizari can influence him on such important things yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely he is see he, he sure has is. no cunning but he has zero intellect you know you can have a combination of the two You very low cunning that you are very you know smart in certain shatir, things. Shatir, as you would say. But ha mm. shatir. Sly. But but huh? intellectually completely vacuous, huh. which is what he is. He is that. You know. Okay. So what is the way forward? If I was to talk like this now, ki you, what both of you are saying, I mean, you'd be considered hawks on Pakistan. Many of them will say, "Ki they were here to care nahi tha." Realistic. You see, because unless and until the other person wants to talk, you are border pe khade ho ke bolte ki main gal karni hai. He said, "I don't want to talk to you." Well, how, why is it that the international community is no longer harping? If you you remember the eighties, कैसे पीछे पड़े होते थे? Whether it is America, whether it is the now, I think India is in a different EU. league. Different now, none of these things. Totally, yeah. India is in a different league. league. What is Pakistan? Yeah. Hmm. Earlier, we wanted to isolate no, no, it, but I want to ignore of, it. It's the most dangerous. Do you, do you remember? It's the most dangerous place well, in the world, world and then. things like that. Nuclear powers, yeah. talk. They know it's not going to happen, and that India is now into. I mean, you are look at the way your economy is growing. When did that change happen? When? When? When do you think that that we India crossed over at that stage where we say कि to hell with you हमने तुम्हारी बात सुननी नहीं है वेरेस अमेरिका और यू यू Everybody accept that after fifth August two thousand and nineteen Kashmir is no longer on the table as far as India is concerned, and the international community has accepted this. Now Kash India has pulled Kashmir out of the table, as as Dr. Jay Shankar said. The only thing is when Pakistan is going to return POK to us. So it has been accepted. So there is no. Okay, Nick, talk. Don't talk. Don't talk. India has so much more to offer. You know, whether it's SCO, whether it's G20, whether it's BRICS, you know, RIC. You were uh, two. You were the president. You know, G20, you were the security quad, yeah, quad. Yeah, quad. You know, so the attention has changed. Because the US, US is looking at China. US is looking at quad. Looking at the the Indo-Pacific. You know, those are more important. What is China things. looking at, Sushant? Look, before I come to China, you know, just. on this whole geo economics thing if pakistan is talking about connectivity and then pakistan says connectivity between south asia and central asia etc etc south asia is what it's india but you don't have connectivity with india so your entire connectivity project goes for a six your cpec is not going to be successful until it, unless it has an east west alignment as well wo to hai hi nahi so you are a bridge to nowhere Right, so all this talk about geoeconomics falls flat because Pakistan's geographical relevance is just not there anymore. It is relevant now in the context of India. Now that's not, a very significant thing that you're saying because all along Pakistan so map they go na yar has leveraged its geography. Has leveraged its. It can still do it if it gets into trade and connectivity with if India. It, if it becomes a bridge between India, but it leveraged its geo. Uh, uh, strategic strategic significance. significance because of the entire Russia uh, Afghanistan. First, in the end of the Ayub Khan, it was against Soviet Union. Soviet, yeah. Then it became uh, when the Soviets invaded Afghanistan, it became against Afghanistan. Then again on the war on terror. So that was geographical, its strategic location. Today, the that US location and matters. Was, no, and then that was used in a very negative context. When you talk about economics, geo economics, then you are talking about something positive going forward. right something which actually gets you much longer lasting benefits but for that you need to get down your high horse i just hope people in the indian establishment understand i don't know if people even in sir tell me if i'm wrong aap log naksha kaksha dekhte ho kabhi do you study a map because very often you know i see aap log bole to ra nahi nahi ra hi nahi but i come on yaar kyu mere ko aise hi talk about government of india he's not going to say it because yeah. very often i see people talk about stuff har ek office mein na map hota hai nahi nahi sir map to wo waise hi wo no no the point is wo jo cartography that the lowest of the low hanging fruit for pakistan is what you allow indian trade 
through Afghanistan and Afghanistani trade through the land border. This is the lowest of the low hanging fruits. But they are such dumbos that and despite that works having for said them. it, it works for them more than it works for us. See, at the end of the day, Afghanistan is a $10 billion economy. $10 billion, right? That's the size of the economy. Kitni trade kar loge unke saath? What will you get out of that? What does Afghanistan really sell or buy? With what, right? But if those trade routes open up, Pakistan then the Pakistanis benefit, right? But they want to cut their nose to spite my face. I said, please go ahead, cut whatever else you want to cut, right? I don't mind. And soon you will happen. It will happen that Afghanistan will develop a trade route through Iran. They are through Chabahar, you know. And Indian ships will go from Mumbai. Chabahar ki to kab se sun rahe hai? But there have been problems, you know, US sanctions and all. There have been problems. But I think things are reviving now. Things are moving on that. But Pakistan is because it is so stupid, they don't realize the benefits of just transit trade. They don't have to do a thing. Hmm. Trucks going from one side, transshipment, use Pakistani trucks. They make money both ways. Yeah. To come back to the question on China, what is how does China view this situation now? Look, I think... What is their interest? I think the, Chi the Chinese have a deep interest in Pakistan, right? I don't think they're going to get it, give it up right now. But I think they also have very serious concerns about Pakistan. Now, all this... Stuff which you've heard over the last two days uh, and other stuff which has been coming that now we are going to make a railway line from the Karakoram. <laughs> it's not happening. Okay, I can tell you. Why are you laughing about that? Come on, yeah, $62 billion dollars, who's going to invest it's, in Pakistan? It's, it's not happening. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Plus, if they make a railway line out there, it presents fabulously juicy targets uh, in the event of a conflict, right? <laughs> and it just comes crashing and down. Before that, yeah. What about the uh, the Baloch and the TTP? Will they allow it? Will they allow it? Uh, or through their lands. Yeah. Right. So, so, uh, so all those announcements, mm. I think you take with a pinch of salt. Mm. But I think the Chinese have a very deep strategic interest in Pakistan. I think they've given up those dreams of Pakistan also having some economic value. Because as of now, they've only sunk money in Pakistan. Uh, the interesting thing, and this is somebody uh, in uh, a, a, some official who, whose assessment it was, and I think he's right. Uh, if you look at what the Chinese are doing, they're not giving the Pakistanis any money the way they used to in the past, right? They're not stepping up to the plate and saying that, okay, fine, if you're not getting a deal with the IMF, I will step up and I will bail you out. They're not doing it. The, what the Chinese are doing is what a Shylock would do, right? They are saying, okay, let him, her, him, everybody else come and bail you out. Then we will chip in. Once you are bailed out and you have the money to start paying us, then we will come. Hmm. And the Pakistanis uh, are in a very bad spot right now. Partly because now the Chinese are no longer even observing diplomatic niceties with them. You know what, what the Chinese foreign minister said in public yeah. when he... Two days ago, just two with days. Bilawal. No, 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 ha, no, with Bilawal on the side. Between uh -huh. Afghanistan, Pakistan, the tri yeah, trilateral. Yeah, the trilateral. He said so openly, get your act together, what are you doing? Unless of, until, this political instability yeah. is, is not... Is I mean, not, I've never seen the Chinese admonish, hmm. Hmm. you know, uh, at the foreign minister level. The earlier the uh, Chinese embassy in Islamabad had issued a diplomatic note when they were wrangling about the route. Yeah. They had done that, but that was a Chinese mission. Here is the Chinese foreign minister in Islamabad Telling them, get your act together, what the so, hell are and you doing? Earlier, sir, you remember in the 90s, I think the Chinese president, I think it was Jiang Zemin, yeah. who had advised them. It was in Lahore, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was addressing parliament, the joint session uh, of parliament. Either it was in Lahore or the joint session, I'm not very clear right now. Uh, but he had advised them that, you know, you need to start making up with India. Not in as many words, but basically saying Problems that, left over from history you know, and things like that. Need yeah. to be sorted out. Uh, they ignored that. Uh, the problems only increased to their detriment. Now this guy has come and said that, look, you know, you have this great internal stability and if you have this kind of a thing, who's going to come to Pakistan? Hmm. Who will invest money in Pakistan, right? Uh, but this is in front of cameras. Yeah. What is happening behind closed doors is even worse. worse yeah. They are actually talking down to the Pakistanis. They're treating them like a client now. You know, that kind of shit is happening. You remember that thing? What was that? Nawaz Sharif, 
ਸੰਭਾਲ ਪਗੜੀ ਸੰਭਾਲ ਹਾਂ ਦੈਟ ਵਾਸ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਸਲੋਗਨ ਤੇਰੀ ਪਗੜੀ ਨੂੰ ਲੱਗੀ ਅੱਗ ਜਾਗ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਜਾਗ ਜਾਗ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਜਾਗ ਤੇਰੀ ਪਗ ਨੂੰ ਲੱਗੀ ਅੱਗ ਹਾਂ ਦੈਟ ਵਾਸ ਵਾਟ ਵਾਸ ਸੇਇੰਗ ਐਂਡ ਓਬਵੀਅਸਲੀ ਰਾਈਟ ਯੂ نو ਸੁਸ਼ਾਂਤ ਵਾਸ ਟਾਕਿੰਗ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਬੇਲਿੰਗ ਆਊਟ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਹਾਊ ਕਮ you know it's not happening we, historically we've always seen that the west steps up america steps up and bails out pakistan is bar kya hua because that time they, they needed the, no they needed the geographical location hmm. all the three times when us has bailed out pakistan is when they required the geographical location against the soviet union against in afghanistan on the war on terror now the us sees afghanistan in the rear view mirror and pakistan even further away the only interest in pakistan today is the nuclear weapons and terrorism to make sure that the terrorists you know don't uh, beyond that the us is not interested in either pakistan or in afghanistan and so, russia and what is the so russia thinks you see but the, there's a it. change right yeah. in the in the russian so the russian is selling oil it, it's fine for them but mm-hmm. they also know that the us uh, pakistan is giving ammunition to ukraine which is being used against russian troops hmm. and the russians are not stupid hmm. you know they also know this so let's see when the first tanker comes to karachi how will they refine it no no they it won't be refined sir it will be a refined product will come they don't have the capacity to yeah, refine yeah exactly they don't have so the, i don't know whether it is crude oil or whether it is refined uh, product the, is refined products okay. they're going to be selling refined products okay. which is why the the price which is normally being quoted there's no clarity right now yeah. but whatever price is being quoted i doubt if they're going to be selling it at that price because crude price is something and refined product refined price product is something, something completely f- different and then of course the fact that it takes many days for that crude to travel all the way yeah. uh, also has a price attached to it yeah, yeah, the, so the, the so if they are quoting 45 cost. 50 dollars a barrel i think that's nonsense that's yeah. that's not going to be the it's going to come price. at the end of the month we'll get more clarity on that. i won't be surprised because uh, you know the americans can be pretty ruthless when it comes down to it although aajkal they are more woke than they are ruthless but uh, <clears throat> given how much they, they have resisted uh bailing out pakistan or you know getting even the imf to give them a billion dollars not that that billion dollars is going to change anything but given how much they have resisted or they've not really stepped up to the plate uh i suspect that there might be something else which is maybe they have reconciled ke inko let them sink let them go under because once they go under then maybe we can extract certain other benefits out of these guys Uh, and of course why should we bail them out when they are so close to the chinese let the chinese put in their money now the chinese are saying let the americans put in their money to yahan par jaise babu ke do between the cracks ha, ho gayi na ba- ba- babu ke beech mein nahi hota ye file wahan se sign karwa wahan se sign karwa wo dono ke beech mein bhag rahe hain we also see we also see you know that ha so is pakistan falling between the cracks as what sushant is saying you know right now i mean both of us i think between us we are speculating at least 50 years of experience of looking at pakistan hmm I never seen Pakistan so bad. officially unofficially uh, whatever <laughs> okay I have never seen Pakistan so bad yeah. because it's multiple crisis was being called a poly crisis you have a political crisis very severe political crisis you have with constitutional implications you have a judicial crisis the judiciary is fighting amongst itself there's a confrontation between the legislature and the judiciary for example can you believe the chief justice has asked for records of the national assembly debate to be summoned and the national assembly has retorted by telling the speaker you convert the house into a committee and we will summon the chief justice before us and ask him to give the records of their deliberations on how they have arrived at the judgment see a uh, parliamentary committee can do that so yeah. they said the entire national assembly co committee went on and let summon the chief justice i mean this is amazing you had people have not recovered from the floods the 30 lakhs people still living outside you have a security crisis the ttp is on the rampage you know so all these crises and then the economic crisis economy yeah. and then sir the institutional crisis an army which is uh, which is diffident which is not able to assert itself the way it has in the past, in the past. And, and and the army is always seen itself as a sucker so, of last resort if yeah exactly so this is what i was coming last resort ka matlab hai ki ek koi na koi to military dictator aa jayega na chief martial law administrator which they have Lekin because they can handle with ah. all this crisis is what else uh, but what can the army do the army has no expertise to run the economy what can the army do in pakistan that they've always been the solution to no, any crisis no but the solution has led to the problem far worse no no but see uh, the earlier problems were never as deep and as widespread as they are now hmm. so earlier there would be a political problem the army would step in there was an economic crisis or something the army would the economic crisis has never been as bad as this right this time 
given all those crises which you know mr deveshwar has outlined if the army steps in and that might be the last resort and it might happen in the next couple of days for all we know yeah uh, then the problem is what magic wand does the army have to sort these matters out mm-hmm. are they going to shoot at people are they what are they going to do how are they going to how are they going to fix the economy uh, so for fixing the economy you need very very deep structural reform mm. right very deep structural reform also will extend to the army okay even if it doesn't extend to the army it will it will completely uh, you know upend and overhaul the complete economic system which means a lot of those uh, those those rich guys who have been trotting all over the place are going to go under it's going to cause massive disruption and dislocation and then it will have a certain impact which will be felt in the rest of the polity then you have to fix how are you going to fix the politics of the country and then once you have intervened then when you climb off that horse we have seen in the past yeah. what has happened when the transition takes place after a couple of years to another civilian government you again have a civilian government which is always looking over its shoulder so the mess and only deepens the imf will stop as soon as there is a military coup sanctions will kick in from the us imf will stop giving you fund world bank will pull away how can the so the only solution which can take place may not be a military coup but what's being called a technocrat government you know people they bring it but their technocrat government experiment has not worked in the past either yeah hmm. exactly it has not worked in the past huh. musharraf tried it initially yeah. he brought in a government of technocrats yeah. Yeah. it didn't work it did work yeah. but yeah. look even what will the technocrat so the problem with the te- the problem with the technocrat is he has no connect with the people yeah. okay he will be sitting he wo apna bai khata kholega wo bolega okay this is how i'm going to fix the economy without worrying about the being the, elected, the, the, elected. The, the, okay. okay a politician what he will do is you know he'll no, say no, okay no. fine let me cut a corner out here let me cut a corner there you remember when dr manmohan singh also came in everybody said that he he is not a politician so it doesn't matter you have a technocrat who's sitting out here in fact there are many who think that even raghuram rajan is hopeful that agar rahul gandhi prime minister banta hai to i will be the prime minister rahul gandhi mere piche baithega main technocrat many say that that's what raghuram rajan's uh, uh, view yeah, is go, so if you say that delusions to bahut logon ke hote hain to it's it's okay the technocrat is fine thinking that he will become prime minister after some time the technocrat also becomes political because you know yeah he dr manmohan singh was the most underrated politician yeah, yeah, i feel yeah, yeah. you know he was a very very shrewd politician kehne ko he was a technocrat he was so even if, no, if the Smita, pakistan in, army brings a technocrat do you think that he will be disconnected with politics no 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 look to so begin with yes no. you see a politician's biggest advantage is he feels the pulse of the people he knows what the people want kya karna chahiye look at even the shahbaz sharif government the imf was negotiations were going well then they gave a massive subsidy on fuel prices and the imf just pulled off abhi tak ninth review jo november mein hona chahiye tha we are coming to may and the june mein the program finishes the imf said nothing of the sort you've gone back these politicians are saying look we need to have something for relief for the people it cannot be a cut and dried program what you are telling us to do we have to give relief to the people but then the imf will not accept that so a technocrat will say as you said sitting in a air conditioned room you say no 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 this has to be done he doesn't have that pulse of the people and the people in the in, and in india's case when manmohan singh balked at certain reforms right because he thought that he will not be able to sell it it was narsimha rao who i really credit as the architect of the reforms right or the father of the reforms who actually said you go ahead do it let me manage the politics the congress party lost in 1996 partly as a result of the disruption which happened but they saved this country and i think that credit goes to the congress party and uh, to both dr manmohan singh as well as narsimha rao but without narsimha rao backing those reforms the way he did it they would have never happened but even then smita what many people forget is that pakistan has gone through that cycle 23 times or at least 13 times right in Wait india's the case the first time it happened we kind of reformed and we moved forward the pakistanis have always taken the imf loan wo do teen tranche lete hain aur uske baad bolte hain ya theek hai ab nakki ho gaye it's also this i think the mentality that indians have 
कि लोन नहीं लेना डेट में नहीं होना दैट गोल्ड दैट 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 थिंग दैट वो सोना गिर भी रख दिया यू नो आई डोंट थिंक चंद्रशेखर एवर गॉट ओवर दैट धब्बा ऑन हिज प्राइम मिनिस्टर बट दैट वाज अ वेरी स्मार्ट थिंग ही डिड इट वाज श्योर अग्री बट पॉलिटिकली इट वाज डिजास्टरस बट या इट्स इट्स लाइक यू सेड यू नो पाकिस्तान के केशनो दे हैव दिस बिलीफ दैट दे आर टू इंपॉर्टेंट टू फेल दे बी द ओनली मुस्लिम कंट्री विद न्यूक्लियर वेपन्स वेपन्स देयर आर टू इंपॉर्टेंट एंड हमारी लोकेशन ऐसी है कभी यूएस आ जाएगा कभी पाकि चाइना आ जाएगा कभी सऊदी आ जाएंगे अपनी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी नहीं लेनी दे कॉन्ट रिफॉर्म देर ओन सिस्टम बट समी एल्स विल कम एंड बेल दम आउट इफ यू लुक एट सोशल मीडिया यू लुक एट पाकिस्तान टेलीविजन देर इज दिस थिंग दैट जो अमीर लोग हैं उन्होंने सबने अपने बच्चे भेज दिए बाहर एवरीबडी सेंट इफ यू कैन अफोर्ड इट यू सेंड योर चिल्ड्रेन बाहर है एक पैर बाहर है दैट्स वट ऑल द टी वी शोल नेशनैलिटी सो मेनी डूअल नेशनैलिटीज देर ऑल गोइंग दे सिटिंग अब्रॉड एंड देर कॉमेंटिंग अबाउट the situation in pakistan but there is a change if you've noticed in some of the tonality that you know india ke sath hamare rishte acche hone chahiye behtar hone chahiye i'm noticing the same people who were so vitriolic have changed in their television shows yeah, absolutely you? yes Haan. you see there are diplomats there are army officers retired there is we loggers who are saying you know uh, you know despite his faults you know mr modi has done wonders for india and we should trade after all we are the same one person even said you know i became uh, um, you know my fa- grandfather converted uh, one generation two generations ago i wish he hadn't so i want to go back and claim my heritage in india you know things like this they're meaningless because they don't really matter you know this is just too small but yes it is indicative conversely there are people in india again a very few who don't matter at the moment the dynamic is they are saying pakistan today is very weak we should perform, follow a much more aggressive policy towards pakistan ye baithe na hamare sath so you know you have this He's dynamic the one who says this this no, is no, a very amazing I, dynamic no. which is happening on both sides and i agree with you that there are people in pakistan who now suddenly are discovering their indian roots they want to play cricket smita smita and they want to to alag ki mat nahi nahi they are looking back to their roots they are writing I, to jaisha I don't that uh, please allow uh, yeah, but, but and and if Jaisha was ever to allow it I'll curse him right I'll I'll curse him the worst curses if he was ever to allow it when you have the enemy on the mat slay him okay I am very very clear and I'll give you the look I have not become what I am today I have not I didn't I was not born thinking like this right hmm. I came from a family my father who had very good associations across the border uh some which I inherited uh and really good ones right uh and and i there was a time when i got into this profession i actually believed you know things can work out until i realized better and my for me i think in many ways the cut off point was 2008 2611 hmm. that's when i said and 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 not just the attack the attitude of the pakistanis when they tried to cover it all up you know not contrite nothing and even when people said you know this is very bad they were being utterly insincere and dishonest when they were saying it they didn't give a shit they were all bloody celebrating i know it so that is that was my cut off point now my point is that you you know you always try and cut slack for them the moment you cut slack for them and they recover the attitude is the same, same. what it was before they you know before Because this the mindset, you know the mindset has been so poisoned against india this is all tactical this is all upar upar se you know the punjabi compromise chalo chalo ye wo banda changa kar raha hai wo piche lag jao you know that is that they don't take baad mein dekhenge na baad mein dekh lenge inko ab bhi samjhota kar lo baad mein we will you know hum attitudes ki baat karte hain i have to speak about this you know I, there are so many diplomats who when they are in service and when they do pakistan desk and all that wo hamare piche pad jate hain when we are journalists you know they get after us there's an article also you've seen how when india pakistan talks hoti thi you know there'd be one press conference that indians would have then there's another press conference that the pakistanis have and the dialogues were going on so we rush from one to the other to the other till the deadline of the newspaper shutting down and then whoever had the last uh, press conference that person got the upper hand so literally till page shutting time when this was before 24 hour news cycle they got the final word those very diplomats once they retire they become like from hawks they become doves that because there was an entire industry which catered to that 
आप चाहो प्रिया चले गए आप वहां चले गए आप यू जंकेट इंडस्ट्री द जंकेट इंडस्ट्री नाउ दैट इंडस्ट्री हैज ब्रोकन सो नाउ यू आर सीइंग द डिप्लोमेट्स हु टॉक्ड अबाउट इंप्रूविंग टाइज दे आर द वंस हु बिकम हॉक्स यू नो वेयर इज द इंटेलेक्चुअल ऑनेस्टी इन दिस एट लीस्ट सुशांत इज सेइंग दैट ही चेंज्ड हिज व्यूज बिकॉज़ ही इनहेरिटेड समथिंग यू नो and then he realized the ground situation ye to intellectual dishonesty hai that you seeing yeah absolutely there's there's no doubt about that the whole lot of them you know and uh, so their attitude is you have to accept you must accept a contrary point of view that we need to have if india is to grow if india is to become a regional power you would need to take your neighborhood along with you you need to have you know trade you need to have a flexible visa policy so they justify their position or their change in their position on this basis that we are talking what is good for india in the long term that if you want to become a regional power that this is what you must do well bilawal uh, has no, also no, quoted but, that so, his so neighborhood I, first should be inclusive no, of pakistan no yeah. but but here is the problem you know when people say all this uh, i i understand where they are coming from and i i can okay i respect their point of view but i want empirical evidence what is the empirical evidence do they have in justifying what they are suggesting right if you look at uh, the the data uh, let's take 1990 as the cut off when india starts the economic reforms uh, and india was behind pakistan at that point of time True. right and 1990 is also the 1991 also the point where uh, terrorism comes in a very although it came in the 80s in punjab but 1990s was like kashmir, kashmir punjab yeah. was already happening the pakistanis were also involved in northeast which very often does not enter our Figure national consciousness yes, correct they were all over the bloody place right uh now you look at the trajectory of the two countries from 1990 and our trade with pakistan has always been marginal yeah. right so we have achieved whatever we have achieved in the last 25 odd years regardless of pakistan regardless of pakistan yeah. how does it matter If India has to become a great power, yes, we must have good relations with our neighbors, but with neighbors who want to have good relations with us. Exactly. exactly. We should not, and and this whole thing that no, we need to suck up to Pakistan because otherwise, what does Pakistan offer us in terms of connectivity? Let's talk about it. I keep asking people, it will connect us to Central Asia. भाई क्या खरीदोगे वहाँ से? नहीं नहीं. Before that, unless Afghanistan is settled, uh, how are you going to have connectivity to Central Asia? Right. You can't. And you do you know, think you can have anybody will build anything through Afghanistan at this stage? Maybe the Central Asians have something to sell us, and Pakistan is important in that context. But it is not for me, right. and I can I can route it otherwise. There, there are many efficient routes, and people have actually uh, tried some of those routes uh, through Iran and through other places to access the Central Asian markets, and those have turned out to be uh, extremely profitable and viable. so pakistan is not important for me in that context if so, i was to if i was to come back to imran and get it into the personality part you are obsessed with imran khan if, yeah. <laughs> imran khan yeah, are typical he interviewed him uh, yeah, yeah, typical yeah. hindustani uh. wala jo if i was to come back to imran khan and bilawal ye kya matlab this is the accusation that all men make that mm. women journalists no no i'm not saying this as a woman journalist i'm saying as a hindustani patrakar ki yeah. hum imran khan pe हाँ तुम्हारी ऑब्सेशन है सब लोगों की इमरान खान इंडियन सॉरी टू से आई डोंट इंक्लूड यू इन दैट बट देयर इज एन ऑब्सेशन विद पाकिस्तान अमंग द इंडियन जर्नलिस्ट कम्युनिटी यू रिमेंबर दैट यू रिटन फोर बुक्स ऑन पाकिस्तान एंड यू आर टेलिंग मी दैट आई हैव एन ऑब्सेशन नो 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 आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू स्टडी पाकिस्तान लुक एट द ब्रेकफास्ट मीटिंग विद मुशर्रफ हैड इन आगरा अच्छा आप कर रहे हो तो आप स्टडी कर रहे हो और हम रिपोर्ट कर रहे हैं तो फालतू काम कर रहे हैं नहीं नहीं बट नॉट रिपोर्टिंग की बात नहीं कर रहे ए ऑब्सिक्वसनेस की बात कर रहे हैं लुक एट द ब्रेकफास्ट मीटिंग किसकी ऑब्सिक्वसनेस है मीडिया की यस Look at that that breakfast meeting that Telugu Deshwar is talking about in Agra. Did in you Agra. see all these so-called doyans of Indian journalism? Yeah. They were like, you know, the Pakistani journalists would not treat a military dictator with as much of subservience and Admiration obsequiousness and the as and these guys did. Yeah. Hmm. And I I can name names if you want, but you know it, yeah. it'll they be a little embarrassing. They were falling over the man, yeah. Hmm. Mate, it was cringe. It was so cringe the way these are, you know, literally as though they were. Okay, I don't want to use colorful language. But it like, didn't happen this time in Goa. No, because he didn't call you. He treated the Indian media like shit. 
He only spoke to the Pakistani media. No, no, and also Bilawal he, he spoke he, to Indian media. No, he yeah, didn't speak true, to Indian. Uh, okay, but okay, he, you he, know, he selected. Him. You know, they. Hmm. Uh, I'm sure the mission here would have selected who they wanted to speak to, hmm. but the kind do of do welcome. Oh, oh, his car is coming. No, no, no. You know, his car is coming, and he's getting off the uh, in the hotel, and he's entering the hotel. Twenty-four seven, the live end of the T20 match. Hmm. A Chinese foreign minister came. Nobody knew where he came when he went. Hmm. Nobody saw the Russian foreign minister. But Bilawal ke liye sare cameras wale. But wale you realize that Indian media has been reporting for a long time. Yahan tak ki if you remember Xi Jinping ka uh, Doordarshan pe Levin Levin Jinping ho gaya tha bechara because nobody even now they say Shri Jinping or Mr yeah. Jinping in many yeah. uh, they don't realize that you call them president yeah. or you do yeah. you say Shi you don't say yeah. Jinping but. This is it because Indian media, like uh, I'm sorry, but even uh, authors and specialists are focusing all the time on Pakistan. We have fought three and a half wars, four conflicts, if I may say, three wars on Kashmir and one war with Pakistan, which was not on Kashmir. We folk all the time. We have had Pakistan as our adversary. So obviously, everything about Pakistan is important, right? Yeah, but how much do people in India, despite all this obsession which people have, how many people actually understand that damn place? Are you? What is people's interaction? I anarchically gya, mujhe paise nahi liye. Yar, to bahut bada gatiya aadmi hai, paise de deta wahan par. Paise nahi liye. Mat ki wajah dus rupees de raise nahi liye, and you are willing to sell off your country because he didn't charge ten rupees from you. And people out here make the mistake of. Confusing personal relationships, and you can have very good personal relationship with a few people across the border, with and then they extrapolate that personal relationship with a national oh, level yeah. relationship, ignoring all the muck which is there, you know, and that is what I I find But strange. But what Pakistani journalists also did, no? They came to Goa and they said, "Kya badiya beaches hai? If you can't go to uh, the west, then Goa serves your purpose." But That's different. Yeah, that's different. Goa, me, Gandhi, Goa, me, 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 Goa,
पीपल हु आई बीन आई एम नोन वन ऑफ माई अकाउंटेंट्स फ्रॉम अनदर लाइफ यू नो द स्टोरी इज विच आई हर्ड हिज फादर वॉज अ बैंक मैनेजर इन नौशेरा which which is a big thing right this is a 5 year old kid he had a 1 year younger sister and the father had gone to wind up stuff in noshera in uh, kp to come back and the mob attacked this kid hid with his little sister in a corner and he saw his parents and grandparents getting butchered this 5 year old kid and somehow he made it to some camp Right, like the Milka Singh story also. Right, mm. yes. and this Can is a be. personal story. This gentleman was my accountant. You've seen stories like this. Now you want to forget it all and say no, no. Mm. But we were living in peace together. You were not. Mm. The moment you got a chance, you butchered each other. So don't give me that crap. You know that we were all. It was all very hunky dory. It wasn't. Yeah, it must have been among some people. But by and large, you had separate villages. You see, also the Muslim League propaganda. You had separate lives. Muslim League propaganda said that even when the contest was between two Muslims in 45 elections, 46 elections, their propaganda was that a vote for a Muslim candidate of the Muslim League is halal, hmm. and a can vote for a Muslim candidate of the Congress is a kafir. Yeah. So I am going to now come to the concluding remarks. Uh, so, in conclusion, where do you see India-Pakistan relations? What do you see happening in Pakistan now? I don't see Indo-Pakistan relations going anywhere, unless and until Pakistan walks back hmm. on the position that it has taken. It, there's no wriggle room for diplomats at all to talk on any issue. See, on on Pakistan itself, we've talked about the current situation in Pakistan, which is extremely bad. But you know, below this, which I've been writing and talking about, are the structural problems in Pakistan. It takes water. It's running out of water. My favorite topic: education. Fifty percent of the children don't go to primary school. how are they going to go to secondary and so it has a poorly educated or illiterate labor force how will they compete in a globalized world economy we have talked about population is growing at over 2.4 to 2.5% as the results of the latest census are going to come out there are about 3 million people entering the labor force every year and unless or until the pakistan's economy or pakistan's economy grows at about 6 to 7% they cannot find jobs for these people so what happens to these poorly educated poorly educated people young people who are coming out into the job market so these are the deeper problems which nobody in pakistan is paying attention to so i see even if they solve the current problems the constitutional problems the political problems the economic problems these challenges are nothing what is going to happen to water the yeah. china can't give them water nuclear weapons can't produce water yeah there as per pakistan's own studies by 2025 26 Per capita availability of water will fall below 500 cubic meters, which is like drought-like That's conditions. That's an entire chapter in his book, by yeah, the yeah, way. Yeah. Yes. So you know, I say, do something. Yeah. Nobody Correct. is thinking about it. So, uh, so Shant uh, uh, Tilak has spoken about what's going to be happen with Pakistan and the structural issues. I'm going to ask you in conclusion. how is kashmir reacting to this how do they feel like betrayed by pakistan how do they see it kashmiri see it because it was always that pakistan will bail them out you know so what now so a couple of things one i think what happened the constitutional reforms in 2019 have proven to be a game changer i think that's a no brainer we honestly speaking uh, the audacity of what was done the reforms that were initiated uh i was i was taken aback right uh, and frankly i i was really hoping that i hope they've thought this thing through but at that point of time a kashmiri pandit friend of mine told me that kashmiris uh, are very smart people and they can see which way the direction in which the wind is flowing hmm. right to thoda bahut hoga but everything will settle down and they will adjust to the new reality it seems that is happening there is of course there is a problem there will be an element which will never reconcile but i think what you need to do in kashmir is to steadily marginalize those guys not give them the kind of space that people like mr dullat and others used to give in the past ki yaar theek hai inko paise dete raho so that they keep doing what they are doing nothing of the nonsense right Uh, it's good that this government has cracked down on money laundering it's good that this government has cracked down on a range of other issues and that is the way to go so that uh, the only thing missing right now in that whole plan 
is a, a, a kind of a political revival or a revival of the political process. But terrorism? Right? What about that? Yeah, terrorism is Uska at a curve. very low level. They've just hit on your... No, 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 no. Those things will happen. I remember what I told you earlier. Be prepared for an endless war. Right? This shit is going to happen. It'll happen. So, you have to be ready for that. You have to continuously... This asymmetrical war, there has to be some kind of reaction. There is, are yeah, uh, the uh, sorry, Israelis have been doing it for 70 years. Correct, yes. Have they got a result? And they hit back even much harder than what we have been hitting back. And yesterday it happened. Like last night, uh, uh, the, uh, Israeli, uh, have, uh, the Israelis have launched uh, another uh, project. Yeah, so yeah. they'll keep doing it, right? Yeah. They'll keep doing it. The other guys will keep coming back. They will drive a car into somebody. They'll fire a few rockets. So, Israel, I think, is in an endless war. We are in an endless war. I think we need to internalize that reality uh, so that we can combat it. If yeah. we keep expecting uh, that, you know, India will become a land of milk and honey and everybody, it'll be, you know, that utopia thing, then, frankly, I think you need to go to a mental asylum. That's not going to happen. Mm. So, I think one is, as far as Kashmir is concerned, I'm very, very clear that that is the uh, right. that, that is the reality. As far as Pakistan is concerned, I, I, I agree with what Mr. Deveshwar is saying that it's not just the current crises. It's also the deep-seated crises which are mm. there, right? Mm. Uh, and they have absolutely no idea on how they are planning to address that. Mm. They neither have the resources, nor the intellect, nor the intention. Okay? Because out there, everything is agle hafte, do hafte, three weeks. That is their, basically their time frame. I just take a toe, you know. Get to see today off, then we'll see tomorrow's yeah. another Haan, day. Tomorrow's another day. And, and they take it right to the wire before they back off. Right. Uh, but on the India-Pakistan uh, thing, I think it is very clear to me that the Pakistanis are geniuses in not missing any opportunity to miss an opportunity. <laughs> and what they do is that they... They go for broke. At every time when they are talking to India, they will go for broke, right? And what happens is that they take positions and whatever might be a possible solution or might be on offer to sort out certain problems is off the table after that. When they come back to the table, what was on offer in the past is no longer on offer. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, and I don't want to go back into history because now you're winding up. But what was on offer during this Manu, uh, Mush, Musharraf Manmohan Singh era, what Ambassador Lamba and others have written about, I don't think that's on offer anymore. Hmm. That's not on offer anymore. They've lost that opportunity. Yeah. There might be something on offer right now. Right? I, I don't want to talk about it, but there might be something on offer right now. If they want to accept it, and I'll say something very, very strange. Right? Uh, and very counterintuitive. Everybody says that nothing will happen before 2024. I say the only window of opportunity the Pakistanis have right now where they can get a deal that they might be able to live with is before Ma February, March 2024. Because once the elections happen, then even that is off the table. Indian elections. Yes, about. even that is off the table. Ah, you think there's a political capital? Uh, I'm writing on it so you can read my article. But there might be political capital if they agree to a deal uh, which uh, India will also reconcile to and they can also reconcile to. Peace Otherwise, with Pakistan all... has never won an election for any prime minister no, in no, India. No, no, no. But dekho na, ek minute. But if you settle kar dete ho ek cheez, right? even though I don't think it will finally settle, hmm. But I'm just saying that it's probably a 0.01% chance. But there is, if there is a window, you have it till then. After that, what is on offer right now is not on the I table anymore. I disagree, Sushant. No, no, of course you can. Look, look what happened with... My, I'm trying to be provocative. Even I want now, you to disagree. Even now, every time Pakistan has spoken about or anything happens, the first thing they're saying is, Who said to um, Modi Ji ko, ki wo jayen, Nawaz Sharif ki beti ki shadi pe jayen? Who said to him? So, you know, he has not been able to live down or at least the party has not been able to live down that thing that he made that effort. He invited Nawaz Sharif. He yeah, went so which to is why, which is why they blew that opportunity, the Pakistanis in Pathan Kot. Yeah. Right? They have a slim opportunity in my, this is my analysis. They have a slim opportunity till about February. Other Then, you know, you actually go in the... They, uh, they're slim opportunities, the, even if they 
take that opportunity which you are suggesting even if they take it they don't control their bats they don't control ye jo bat action hota hai unka they don't control it it will happen bilkul sahi baat hai chahe pulwama ho kupara ho kahin pe bhi ho they can't control it so you know i i i think that today shahbaz sharif is in such a weak position he cannot afford to expend any political capital on any sort of आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट इंडियन पोलिटिकल कैपिटल आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट पहले तो उनकी तो बात कर लेना टिल इफ द होल्ड इलेक्शन इन अक्टूबर इफ लेट्स से इलेक्शन आर हेल्ड विद न्यू गवर्नमेंट दैट मे हैव सम पोलिटिकल कैपिटल आफ्टर दिस इज टिल देन आई एग्री विद हिम दैट पाकिस्तान ऑलवेज शूट इट सेल्फ इन द फुट एंड वट एवर वॉज एन ऑफर इज नो लॉन्गर एन ऑफर आई डोंट थिंक सो दिस इज द टाइम फॉर पाकिस्तान टू ग्रैब एनी अपॉर्चुनिटी इफ शहबाज शरीफ डज इट Imran Khan will go go after him and he will to rile the religious party Imran Khan to is going into jail the hai religious hai? parties will get after uh, Shahbaz Sharif wo dekho see my, my my own sense is uh, and like i said i'm saying that this is a long shot but this is the only shot because once you go into an election and if this current dispensation comes back to power in india in 2024 Then then everything is five, off the 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 table. table. Five years they can forget it. Then they can can forget it. There is 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 nothing on the table. Uske baad pata nahi kya right? Mm-hmm. So that that why I am saying that, yes, Pakistan is weak. Pakistan weak. not going to become America tomorrow or or next year or in the next year in years. Does right? it even matter? They are only going to become people? weaker. Look at the trajectory. India is going like this. Pakistan is going like this. Right? The trajectories have changed mm-hmm. completely. So it's not as though. 10 years from now the pakistanis will be our equals i think that train has gone hmm. that's left the station so they have to understand that there might be something on offer to them right now and then modi can use it uh, rather than you know pillaring pakistan he can use it to enhance himself and use it as you know you remember uh, 99 uh, elections when uh, before kargil happened what was vajpayee's a uh, three point agenda bus to uh, lahore pa- lahore budget uh, and there was one more i think uh, bus budget and i don't know one more one more b right it was a 3b kind of that was the agenda the bus went to kargil and dropped on the cliff so they kind of completely changed and then they it made it bbk right uh, but but what i'm saying is that vajpayee tried to change the entire narrative by saying that peace actually becomes an election uh, thing for me it didn't happen then yeah. it again i can see the skepticism on your face no and way. i completely understand it politically but, no yeah. pakistan politically peace with pakistan or moves towards pakistan no indian prime minister after vajpayee will risk it इन अ प्री इलेक्शन को डील मिल जाए चलो देखते हैं ना हाँ। अभी हम 2023 में हैं वी विल रीकनेक्ट बाय 2023 मैडम आई एम टेलिंग यू वन थिंग द पाकिस्तानीज आर सो डम दैट दे विल नॉट दे विल सी इट द वे यू आर सीइंग इट नो आई डोंट मीन यू आर डम बट यू आर यू आर डूइंग अ पॉलिटिकल एनालिसिस बट दे आर सो डम दैट दे विल नॉट सी दैट दिस इज देयर ओन दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू बिकम स्ट्रांगर दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू गेट एनीथिंग आफ्टर 2024 व्हाटएवर दे आर गेटिंग दे आर गेटिंग नाउ इफ दे वांट इट इफ दे डोंट वांट इट इट्स ऑफ द टेबल they won't not only will Baat they kar- not see it so this the, is the future the indian prime minister will not make that move is because no indian prime minister can make that move the indian prime minister was ready to make certain moves which were being discussed on the Come, back channel ha on the back channel right? when but now with four or five assembly elections and a uh, mm-hmm. general election which is coming do you think Jar- that anybody Karnataka wants mein pakistan ek- kitni bari mention hua nahi hua but what i'm saying is agar ho jata to it would become big na हाँ, तो वो अगर so तो so anyway, uh, yeah, कैपेसिटी and the capabilities of the pakistani leadership to resolve they just don't have the vision or they don't have the ability modi ji ko bula le <laughs> so that is the dynamic that is the and nobody has a vision neither imran khan nor shahbaz sharif nor bilawal have any vision what solution are you going to do for the no complex vision, no problem no capacity yeah what the complex problem that you have so this is the situation of pakistan is in 
today. Okay, thank you so much, gentlemen. As I said, my repeat performance guest. So, uh, viewers, listeners, uh, please do like, subscribe on whichever channel you have seen this. Uh, namaste, Jai Hind. Click here to watch the previous episodes.